Hi there. Welcome to the Call to Cinema. I am Aaron, and tonight we are talking again, once again, about Vinegar Syndrome. Last night I gave you my limited edition slipcovers from Vinegar Syndrome. That wasn't my only limited editions. Hey there, William. Welcome, man. Uh, hey there, Danuch. We are going to be talking about Vinegar Syndrome, the non-limited stuff tonight. <clears throat> hey, Chris. Hey, Javid. Um, so hopefully you guys are in are in for in for that. I was originally going to do a monomer carb video. Uh, I am putting the monomer carb video off till tomorrow. Uh, hey Ramon uh, and Dave. So let's just want to start right into it. So who here doesn't collect finger syndrome? Hey there, George. <laughs> or who hasn't started collecting finger syndrome yet? Nobody. Okay, let's let's go. So you're going to see a lot of stuff in here. <coughs> I got a lot of stuff here. I got the case I, yesterday. If you watched my video last night, there's the one with the slip covers. These are the non-slip cover ones. That doesn't mean there's ones that aren't out of print or the ones that are limited edition. There are very much out of print limited edition ones in here as well. So, like before, I do have these in numerical order. So I'm going to try and do them and put them back there as a, so that I don't mess up the order. It made it much easier for me making the video last night. Please like, share, and subscribe. A big shout out right out, right out of the gate for my Patreon supporters because you guys rock and you help make this possible. I will soon be doing a Call of Cinema After Dark video. Uh, hey there, Hammers. Uh, that will be a super chat and that will be going towards getting a new microphone. So <laughs> that's the that that's the plan. Uh, tonight, however, we're doing a regular video uh, and uh, it is a vinegar syndrome video. That's the, that's the killer part. That's the way, way it is with everybody right now. I think I, I bought a lot of tick tonight, so fingers crossed, guys. Went a lot of, won't have to do another super chat again. I don't, <laughs> so this is a double feature. This one is out of print, but you can buy it on DVD. This is the Crypt of the Living Dead and House of the Living Dead. They are two very different films, but it was one that they did back in the days of, of exploitation TV. Early on, Vinegar Syndrome had their own streaming service, which I'm guessing a lot of you would really wish Vinegar Syndrome had right now, especially at this time. Because you, can you imagine the money they would make off their streaming service right now? So Crypt of the Living Dead, uh, House of the Living Dead. I found these kind of fun. I like both of these films. Uh, trying to remember which one has Andrew Prine in it. This was a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. You can still buy this movie here on DVD. Uh, a few of them are on Prime. Now, the worst thing about, about finding stuff on Prime sometimes, and I'll be honest, is that I love Prime. It's my favorite of the streaming chat services. Is that often you find them, but you're never quite sure what the quality you're going to get are. Sometimes it'll be great quality. Other times, not so much. That's why it's always good to own a physical copy of a film. It'll give you the not just the best picture quality, but it'll give you the best audio quality that you're going to have for the film. You will never have the picture quality and audio quality of a physical release on a streaming service. It may come similar, but it'll never come as good. It'll be it'll be okay, it won't be great. And that's uh that's basically just because the technology isn't there. Streaming, you watch the movie on Netflix, it's not as good as owning the movie itself. Um, it's great to watch it, but it's uh the quality's not the same. Hey Cinematech. So this is Massage Parlor Murders. This one is set in 42nd Street, New York. And uh, really, really well done. Very, uh, an odd film. Uh, but if you want to see like early New York, you want to see what like the streets and what it's like, there, you get some really great scenery from there. This one has uh, one of the rare Vinegar Syndrome booklets, which you don't see in a lot of releases. I showed you all the booklets as I was going through last time around. And even it's kind of like a shot, kind of a call sheet type thing there on the inside, which is kind of neat. Something unique for this uh, particular release. As this is one of the early Vinegar Syndrome releases, and when I say early, I'm not joking. This is actually the fourth one that Vinegar Syndrome ever put out. Massage Parlor Murders is number four. If you don't have it in your collection and you like this type of film, I definitely recommend it. I have seen Nightmare City. I gotta watch it again. It's been a long time since I watched Nightmare City. I got it over there in my Arrow uh, collection, and uh, 
I'm gonna eventually do a video on, I'm, I'm doing like a series of directors, a director series of videos, uh, which are gonna be a lot of work, but uh, I'm gonna be doing the Bruno Lanzi one. So uh, I definitely have to rewatch Nightmare City before I do that. Hey there, Alan. So you get running zombies way before like 20 days and all that. Um, <laughs> next up is from the Ted V. Michaels collection. And there are, it's a double feature, and it's a really fun one. I do recommend it. It's the Doll Squad and Mission Kill Fast. That's, can't get a better, more kind of cool name than that. Mission Kill Fast. This, this is just all kinds of awesome. I loved watching these films. If you're a fan of like Andy Sedaris type films, and uh, you like that style of stuff, definitely check these out. There was one, what, what, I, what I had from Vinegar, from On Macabre. Was it Virgins from Hell? And when you guys got got it for me, actually, because I couldn't afford to get it at the time. Uh, but uh, this kind of has that feel to it, as a type of like kind of weird type kind of like. It's just fun. You ready? So yesterday when I was doing the video, I mentioned a movie called Blood Theater, and I mentioned an actress by the name of Mary Wernow. Someone I was quite enamored with, especially when I was younger. And I'm still a big fan of Mary Wernow. So, imagine taking Mary Wernow and putting her with Lynn Lowry, who, at her peak, when she looked her absolute best, uh, then you'd, uh, you'd get this unusual film. Which is fun, but it's not at all what I thought it was going to be, I'll be honest with you. And that is Sugar Cookies. So it stars Mary Warnoff and Lynn Lowry in a dual role. A very unique film. Basically, there's this uh, guy, he's like a, what's he, a photographer, filmmaker, something like that. Uh, and he's with Lynn Lowry at the beginning of the film. And they're, uh, they're making love. And afterwards, he, he kind of like, uh, he kind of kills her. So he um, ends up like talking. I, was, I, th I think Mary Warnock plays. I'm not sure if she plays his agent or something like that. Anyway, so the, they manage to find a girl that looks exactly like Lynn Laurie and uh, played, of course, again by Lynn Laurie. It, it's really cool. It's an intriguing little film. It, it's different. It, it's unique. Uh, it's probably one of Lynn Laurie's like, kind of better roles. Same director, Sonny Blaine. Is that, is it really? I've, I had to have the, you're probably right, actually. <laughs> But now next to next up is the one that everybody has from from vinegar syndrome. It, every, every, when you buy vinegar syndrome, no, definitely not like that over your parent trap. They're not twins or anything like that. No, they just happen to look alike. Think more along the lines of something like uh, my name is Julie Ross, uh, or or something along that style. It's a film noir. <laughs> When people first discover Scream Factory, one of the first ones that they go for is a movie called They Live. It tends to be one of the one of the big first buys for most Scream Factory people. Uh, when people first discover Errol, there's there's various ones that uh, that they'll pick up, but they'll usually tend to go towards one of the Jallo types first, whether it be like an Argento or like a or one of like the limited editions like that. When people initially find out about Vinegar Syndrome, uh, they usually buy Raw Force. It's usually one of the first buys, and there's a good reason. It's actually a fun, insane, crazy mix of a film. It's the low-budget uh, Big Trouble in China. <laughs> so you got a, uh, a karate kung fu team basically here. Uh, you've got, hey there, Lewis. You've got Cameron Mitchell. You've got zombies, and uh, just you got just a little bit of everything. Yeah, the Burbank Kung Fu Club, that's what they're called. Uh, and basically, they go to this mysterious island where, they have, where there are Kung Fu zombies, uh, and it's definitely worth checking out. It's worth owning. It's a new 2K restoration. Uh, there's a feature with the director and cinematographer on here, auto interview with finishing editor Jim Wynorski. Trust me, once you see this movie, you'll know that Jim Wynorski was getting his uh, getting ideas. For, uh, for his films. 
Just put an order from Vinegar Syndrome. Nice. I just uh, got my order uh, placed. Well, not placed. I got my order like fulfilled. I love when I get when I go to the Vinegar Syndrome and I get that fulfilled thing come up on the uh, come up on my order sheet. It fulfilled there last night. All right, just give me a second. All right. There we go. Have we seen the fam film Hack a Lantern? I don't remember it. I mean, I was going to buy it not that long ago. I, I remember ha like seeing it, but I don't remember anything about it. Christmas Eve, a good one, actually. Arrow's Blood and Black Lace. So it is a like Mario Battle type Jello one. See, most people go with the Jello type stuff first. Okay. How crazy do you like your films? Uh, that's, that's my first question. How crazy do you guys like your films? How insane and utterly baffling and divide of logic do you like your films, but still want them to be fun? We're going to do a checklist. And we're going to do it like, do you like nudity? Anybody can answer. Do you like sleaze? Do you like movies that don't make a ton of sense, but you can't stop watching them? <laughs> Did you like yeah, that? Was such yeah, it is such a cool movie. Then, if you like Nightmare Beach, check out Nightmare Weekend. This this is a film. It is a very unique film. It has one of the best covers I've ever seen put out for anything. Uh, Neil Gun Massacre makes much more sense than Nightmare Weekend. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Thanks. Actually, I, I really like doing the martial arts stream. I wasn't sure if people were going to get off on it or not, but uh, I, uh, I, I utterly enjoyed it. I love martial arts films. I don't have enough of them. Obviously, my, I had such a small collection. This as Dale Medkiff. Yeah, if you saw Pet Cemetery, the original one, that Dale Medkiff also ran from Time Tracks. You'll know that show uh, in it. But it's uh, it's got a puppet. It's got giant, giant silver balls that morph and change. It's uh, it's a, uh, it's an unusually fun film. But know that going in, it's a good film to watch. Like for right now, in the days of like kind of social distancing, uh, that's which is going to be a thing for a while now. Here's an idea. Get some of your friends, get like a house party or something like that. Say if you all have copies of Nightmare Weekend or, or some kind of cool, crazy film, Nail Gun Massacre, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, kind of like, it's kind of like Phantasm. Um, actually, I like the martial arts genre. I, I should do more. It's been the first one I've done in a long time in that one. Um, and do like a house party, like watching the same film together. And just have a drink or two or whatever your poison is. And, uh, and check out Nightmare Weekend. It, it's it's very cool. All right. Made by the director of the Bees, Alfredo Zacharakis, Zach, Zach, I think his name is. I'd, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I'm going to just, I'll put that out there right now. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. There is Demonoid. Oh, sure. I'll be gl definitely put it on Facebook. We just finished Cursed Films, actually, Brian. Uh, the last one was a brutal punch in the gut, but... Uh, well done. The end of that off with the Twilight Zone film. And yeah, it's one of those. Did I check out the Kinos? I did. I'll be honest with you, Lewis, I wasn't in super impressed with the Kino sale out of all the sales. There's three sales going on right now that I know of. There is a Kino sale, there is a Raro video sale, of which as the movies at a pretty low price, actually at 50% off. And there is a Mondo Macabre sale. Uh, well, tonight's one's on Vinegar Syndrome. We're doing another Vinegar Syndrome. We're, we're doing the second part of the Vinegar Syndrome stuff. Oh, trust me. As I go through here with the slashers, Chris, I will, I will definitely let you know which ones I recommend. I wanted more from the from the Kino sale. 
Oh, we're doing Vin Vincent tonight. We're doing like a second part of the Vincent video. Uh, trust me, you're known as Errol because there'll be a lot more viewers. <laughs> The, the do now Cinematech, but this is an early one. This is actually number 94. And they wouldn't get into their uh, into their clear cases till a little bit later. Dolly Dearest, you got yours coming in. Did you get your uh, notification too, Lewis? Because I got mine, and let's see. Yeah, vinegar syndrome, definitely. Uh, where's that? It's probably just having this label made by at this point. Electronic information submitted by shippers. I'd be definitely interested in doing a dual video. Let me know when. Look, we'll, we'll work out a time frame because that's something I'd be interested in. Um, how do you do those nowadays? I, I remember uh, how they were back in the day, but because uh, we used to go on like uh, Google Plus and stuff. And it might be, be might be before next weekend or, or like, till I can do something like that, because uh, I work in every day. But uh, we'll, we'll definitely get something si situated. Dinuch, so should be awesome. Yeah, the clear cases are are a much better look. This is the last of the blue cases that I have, and it's number what's it number? Oh, I come that's a number no, no right or number ninety five. It's frightmare. I really got to give this one a better. A, a better shot. I watched this one once when I was tired. I didn't really get into it. it this is probably a much better film than I uh, than I'm giving it credit for. It has Ferdy Main from like uh, what's the name of that one? The uh, the Rome Plansky vampire film, which is for some reason is just like sticking it. Not going in my head right now. Uh, but uh, interesting f idea. Basically, the there's this horror kind of like star, kind of like a Vincent Price type of star. And he um, he dies, and he has a, a cult of people that uh, that are determined to bring him back to life. And it, it, I just gotta I gotta rewatch it. Now everything that I show you from here on out, uh, except for one. Why is that? Is going to have a clear case, I think. Unless some of their blue-gray cases that came out later went to, uh, it'd be interesting to see when they started the blue-gray cases. When we started the white cases, I got to look back on that actually. So this is Luther the Geek. I not everybody likes this one. I like this one. You like Stacy Haddock? You're gonna like this film. Uh, again, we got like a 4K, 2K restoration on here. Commentary with the director. Video interview with Jerome Clark. Video interview with uh, Carlton Albright. Like uh, all the previous tra like extras are on the trauma release, uh, were on the, are on this one as well. Uh, see, the reason I like his cinematech so much is that the guy that stars in Luther the Geek truly commits to being Luther the Geek. You get ones where people will do this and they'll come off like they're embarrassed in the role or or they or they seem just be silly in the role. No, he he goes 110 percent into the role, and that that really kind of like uh, makes it stand out from something that may have another low budget affair. That may not uh, may not come off so well, and also St Stacy Hadiak is nude in a lot of this film. Big plus. Just gonna put that out there. <laughs> Big plus as well. Uh, but I actually really enjoyed this one here. Uh, a very fun film. And here's the uh, the other artwork for the film. A lot of these here have, have dual art. I won't always show them, but I'll uh, you know that most of the vinegar syndrome stuff does have, especially coming to the clear case ones, have like uh, art have like uh, alternate artwork. So the next one is an adult one, and it is, it may be, I was going to do the Taboo series as my first cult cinema after dark, but I might do this one. This one is actually much more accessible than the Taboo series, to be totally honest with you. And it, it was a trilogy. It was put out uh, like first on, on one Blu-ray on its own, and then it got a DVD release, and then the, then parts two and three were put out on DVD. Uh, I think I think in their Peak Rama series, but then they put all three of them together on Blu-ray, and that's when I decided I definitely had to pick it up. That is the Pretty Peaches trilogy. Now, this is an X-rated one, just so you know right, right out of the gate. You probably can tell by the cover. You saw Ratman? Yeah. Ratman was put up by Shameless uh, uh, in, in the UK. It's an odd little film. 
Uh, but you're definitely right. Vin that is definitely something that seems like be up Vinegar Syndrome's alley, especially now that doing like Jallo style stuff, uh, because that is that is usually put alongside that style stuff. If you've never seen the Pretty Peaches show, it is one of the better uh, of of the of these style of films, and has a great cast along all three films. Um, Desiree Castillo's in the first one. Uh, it's directed by Alex Lorenza, who was known for being like a really good director for these style of films. Juliet Anderson uh, actually makes her screen debut in this one. Uh, she, of course, is Aunt Peg. In uh, Pretty Peaches 2, there's another actress. And in Pretty Peaches 3, there's yet another actress. But I found these to be real, really fun. And you can buy them. Get all three of them, the whole trilogy, in one, for the price of one Blu-ray. It is a two Blu-ray set. I'm just making sure I can show the stuff on the inside, and I can because there's nothing here that's too raunchy. So there's the right there. It's funny how some you get so quiet when I talk with the adult stuff. Like you don't want to say that you've actually seen these films when I know some you have. Ah, Andy, welcome, man. Welcome back. Part two is your favorite. I gotta watch them again. I love part one basically because I love the actress. Uh, like she, I think she's real, she's really good, utterly gorgeous too. The Forgotten Jelly set. I think that's. I have a feeling, and no, this could just be me, that like I know certain people are gonna get, would go for the Anvil Curse. Certain people are gonna go for the Angel one. But uh, I think a lot more people go for the Jello set. The car accident in Pretty Peaches one cracks me up, by the way. When the guys come and find her. Uh, it does every time. I'm missing some of your messages there, so I do apologize. Do I have any Bella Danger films? I don't. Actually, I don't know what Bella Danger is. Definitely recommend the Jolly set. It, it does say volume one because there are more. I think there are three volumes in total supposedly coming out this year. Um, so I'm uh, actually very excited about that. I know that after that, like, there's a Spanish horror one uh, coming out uh, sometime this year as well. So there's a few boxes coming up for Vinegar Syndrome. I try to buy all the box sets for Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, I've got, the, obviously, there's the only been two so far. With the third one coming out, and hopefully I'm in my doorstep sometime next week. Not quite sure, you know, how quick shipping is right now. I got bummed out last night because of my uh, Jess Franco set that I ordered from Unobstructed View got canceled because unfortunately they realized they did not have it in stock anymore. But those things happen, which slowed down my Jess Franco video. <laughs> so next up is The Bees. This is one that I actually liked by this director. Oh, it was an enveloped film star. I'm not sure. Is she newer one? If she's newer, I probably don't know her. I told you, Andy, that one's, it's a fun one, too. It's a really fun one. I really hope that and eventually parts four and four to six are uh, done through uh, through Vinegar Syndrome, because I still want to have those, too. I hadn't heard about the Jack Frost 2 release, uh, but I know for sh for certain that the Mexican Horror one, uh, that's what I've been told, that one's coming. But the Jack Frost 2 one, uh, that's been, like, long rumored. Uh, It'll be a fun one. It's not as good as the first film. Don't expect it to be as good as the first film. But it's, it's a fun. It's definitely a fun one to turn on some, some night. It's actually a summer film. It's not a winter film, as opposed to the first Jack Frost film, which is kind of a Christmas film. The second Jack Frost film is actually set in the middle of summer. And uh, it's interesting that way. Really, I see. I like The Bees. Uh, this is one of the ones that I found that was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. It's got John Saxon in it. John Carradine's in it. So we got both of the Johns. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Angel Tompkins is in this one as well, and I love Angel Tompkins. Um, but it just kind of stuck with me. It was one of those early ecological message films uh, that they did, and it was extremely well done, way better than I thought it was going to be. Now, that again, that being said, I did watch this one with a bunch of, of my family and friends. So that definitely makes a difference in, in like skewing how much I like the film. See, I don't know if they will have a, 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 a lenticular on. I hope they do have a lenticular on the second one. But, uh, see, Jack Frost originally did have a lenticular VHS cover. 
Uh, so you can, so with, with them doing Jack Frost, the first one with lenticular uh, Blu-ray cover, uh, totally made sense. And uh, it wasn't just a gimmick, it was because Jack Frost, people remember Jack Frost as being one of those lenticular cover films, much like a mo really crappy movie by the name Werewolf, which was also a lenticular cover film. Uh, now Jack Frost 2 didn't have a lenticular cover. It had a uh, regular cover and not a great one. So it's going to be easy for Vinegar Syndrome to like, definitely up the, the cover on this one. <laughs> I, somehow I don't see them doing the Michael Keaton one. Though with some of the stuff Severin's putting out, uh, I kind of like the birds. Uh, it's much more... It, it, I, I would... It, it's just ser like, like heresy. I, I probably like the bees more. Uh, the, but I was never big. The Birds was never one of my favorite like Alfred Hitchcock films. It's 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 got some really good scenes and sequences and so well shot. Uh, but I uh, it just never stuck with me the way certain ones did. I like the more personal films. I like the Shadow of the Doubts. I like the Stranger on a Train when it comes to Hitchcock. But I'll be doing a Hitchcock video in, in the future, so I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, Dolomite. If you like black exploitation in any form of the imagination, then you must see Dolomite. Welcome to the world of Region Free. This is incredible. Uh, I probably don't have it downstairs here. Maybe I do. Uh, do I have it downstairs? Because we watched it recently. But uh, I've got the sequel to this one as well. And it's called Human Target. You know, sorry, no, Human Tornado. Uh, it, which is also fun. It's not as fun as Dolomite, but it is still a really fun film. So pretend I'm holding it right here, like I did last night with the other one. Look at Human Tornado. It, it's, it's incredible. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the actual only sequel to Dolomite. Uh, you yeah, know, we disagree agree on that. I, it's a good film, and not, not, it's just me personally, uh, for the one, the one that sticks with me. We'll get to those, don't worry. But no, Disco Godfather is not a sequel to Dolomite, see? Uh, Dolomite and Yuma Trinidad are the only ones where he's actually playing the character in Dolomite. In the other films, he's playing a, he's playing a different character altogether. I haven't seen My Name is Dolomite yet, um, but I, uh, I definitely have to uh, check it out. My, my better half has. She loved it. She was in Morocco when she saw it. Um, so uh, we were, no, we were going to watch it together, but she was feeling the best that night. She wanted to stay home, watch the movie, and she watched that one. So I gotta watch it eventually to myself. Next up is the double feature, Black Exploitation one. Really good one, by the way. This is the Candy Tangerine Man and Lady Coco. I do like both of these films. Uh, I think they're both done by Matt Simber, if I'm correct. Um, oh no, there's definitely no scenes cut out of that Dolomite one. Though there was an early release done um, by another company. And I actually talked about it on here not too long ago. I think Unobstructed View had it out. Um, they put out a, 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 an adult, a Rudy Ray Moore kind of Dolomite set. And uh, that, uh, I can't remember the name of the company right now. You, I know that, uh, who was it? Was it Cinema Sickness? Like found like a, a copy of it at a Target or something like that? Well, I was on DVD. I'm not sure if they did a Blu-ray of it or not, too. Uh, but it was the same company. It was like wasn't Vinegar Syndrome. It was a co company previously to Vinegar Syndrome. And uh, yeah, there was like a, uh, a DVD, it, the DVD and the Blu-ray that you're both talking about the same thing. It was done in both formats, but it was from a, a previous company that uh, that had put it out. It's the same. So in other words, you're talking when you're talking about a Blu-ray. When you're talking about a DVD, it's the same company. They put it out in both formats. But yeah, it was cut previously. The, I, as far as I know, Vinegar Syndrome was the first company to put a Dolomite uncut. Uh, I could be wrong with that. Uh, but, uh, uh, oh, Candy Tangerine Man's really fun. So is, so is Lady Coco, actually. Getting into the next, and for some people, it's most fun uh, Rudy Ray Moore film, and this is Petey Wheatstraw. People often, for, because it's Rudy Ray Moore, say, oh, look, this is the next Dolomite. It's not Dolomite. Is a character that's only in two films. Um, this is his character of Petey Wheatstraw, the devil's son-in-law. You got his like magical pimp cane in this one. 
basically he's uh, he's he was, he's killed, I think, and I'm uh, trying to remember this now. And his the devil says, you know, you can go back with all with these type of powers, um, but uh, he's got to marry the devil's daughter, and she's not a very good looking girl, uh, so he's trying to he's trying to find a way to get around it. It's a different film. It 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 is silly. Rudy Ray Moore is a comedian. His movies are meant to be like taken with you know very tongue in cheek. Uh, Dolomite has a lot of action and stuff in it, but it's it is a comedy. Petey Wichstra, and uh, it's good. Like a neat thing about this too, there is an ongoing Dolomite document, kind of like the Devlin, kind of like yeah, his version of the Devlin Daniel Webster, kind of like that. Not as classy as as that, but kind of like that. Uh, every one of these has a, a documentary called I Dolomite uh, on the on the end of it. So the it, all four of these do. There's four like Rudy Ray Moore films cut, that came for Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, it comes out to around 65, 70 minutes long altogether. The whole documentary once you get it. So uh, really cool. I'd love to see them put out like a, a nice box set to put my Dolomite films in. My Rudy Ray Moore films. So there, I'm saying it now too. Uh, last up is. Uh, What's this one called again? D yeah, Disco Godfather. Can't remember his character name, Disco Godfather, right now. <laughs> he's 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 there. He's fun. Rudy Ray Moore's so fun. Uh, but this is this, this is Rudy Ray Moore's message film, and uh, like no, I'm I'm not even joking. I mean like uh, this is like Angel Dust is bad. This so Rudy Ray Moore's made films basically showing off Rudy Ray Moore's kung fu and rhyming style and. In, in the second one, Yuma Tornado, he actually does a stand-up routine at the beginning of the uh, of the film. Uh, Disco Godfather is the fourth one. I, the last one of the Vinegar Cinemas put out at at this time. Um, but definitely a kind of a cool, fun little film. Uh, social commentary film from Rudy Ray Moore. Who would have thought it? Thunk it, right? Uh, but he did. And, of course, this is a new 2K restoration. We get the fourth and final part of the I, Dolomite documentary on here. There's a commentary track with Rudy Ray Moore's biographer as well. Um, just some really cool stuff, in, uh, including like the uh, like alternative Ger German and French language soundtracks. Yeah, and you have to understand, Rudy Ray Moore didn't normally direct his films. There was a guy that he had, uh, well, I guess, you know, <laughs> what do you call it? backseat driving, backseat directing. There was a guy that like directed like some of his films. Um, Oh, hope you and your folks have, are are great there. Enjoy the enjoy your evening. Or I'm missing your comment because the series is getting really slow. Andy, I do apologize. We some the darkness. I gotta watch it. We some darkness. I hear it's good, but, but I'm not quite sure about. It, but I'll check it out. Have a great evening, Andy. Enjoy the time, with the folks. All right. Next up is our is our second of the triple X films, and the actress that's starring in this one would definitely eventually get a called some after dark video uh, focused on her because aside from being a like an actress that has transcended her the, that genre and gone into mainstream stuff as well, she has a very interesting life story behind her. And she is one of the best, look, most attractive, in my opinion, of them. <laughs> Great one, Hindi. Uh, and that is Ginger Lynn. Uh, this is Trashy Lady. It is a comedic take on Pygmalion, or My Fair Lady. Uh, basically, we have Harry Reams, some movies like Deep Throat and stuff, who's mostly known for his comedic star roles. He plays a gangster in the film, and his mall has left him. His mall, gangster's mall, kind of the gangster's girlfriend, his, his gal. Um, so he, there's this like cigarette girl played by Ginger Lynn, who he's very enamored with. Only problem is she's way too classy to be in the arm of a gangster. So he hires, yeah, this is an adult film one, Ramon, uh, she, but, but she has a non-adult films as well. Um, so he hires a girl that works for one of his rivals like she was like the the mall of one of his rivals to teach ginger lynn how to be less of a classy lady and more of a trashy lady 
actually it's a really cool film there's a bonus film on here called coming west which i have not yet watched so i don't know uh how good it is there is the first ever auto commentary with director of photography tom howard moderated by filmmaker dave mccabe this is a 2k restoration of here there's a second auto commentary with herschel savage and bill margold on here so definitely some really cool stuff and there is a alternate artwork which i can actually show you see looking at the film like that you would never look at this film and say oh this is an adult film this is an x-rated title and uh but it is and it is gloriously fun <laughs> see my better half doesn't watch adult films that's not her jam right um not her thing uh but uh she knows that i do these chat <laughs> i do these videos and i buy all types of films not so much like newer stuff or anything like that but uh yeah so i can say in in the you know in the history of research uh, which actually sad enough is actually true in my case um and not an excuse like it would be with some people honey i'm watching this for the plot line sadly i am uh, yeah that that that's kind of sad isn't it that's that that's kind of sad but it's true actually um night train to terror the very first vinegar cinema that i ever picked up and the, this one did have a blue case on it i'd love to get a white case for this one actually really good release if you don't have night train to terror from vinegar syndrome 100 percent check this one out this is a really fun one it's a really weird anthology that's actually made up of three films two that actually were completed and one that i don't think ever got completed now i had seen the uh initial like uh, the one uh, the complete completed one for the uh or i think it was the third film claire <laughs> i did that dave that's the sad thing i did i see you have to remember i when i got out of school i was going to go in for for act for acting i was going for drama i want to go into acting uh, i ended up going into uh, to journalism and uh because of that i was extremely enamored with like with different like uh writers and, and, and styles of articles uh playboy had the best interviews um i bought a book a playboy book once that had no pictures it was like a hardcover book and it was just interviews from all through all through the uh the eras of their of their magazine uh no pictures just like just basic like star interviews uh, and it was it's utterly fascinating i wish i still had it I'm such a geek. Uh, Night Train and Terror. Uh, no, the no Maxwell Cough in this one actually. Um, but the, there is a, uh, a the film Greta is on here, and that's the second uh, of the stories in the in the anthology. Now Greta in the anthology makes very little sense. It's a, it's a weird film, and it's, and the the second part of the anthology is, it seems kind of cobbled together. But once you see the whole film, it makes a bit more sense. Uh, what really is amazing is that the girl that plays Greta is one of those actresses that was the only thing she did and she's just she she kind of shines she's got this kind of aura about her are there any classic play by blu-rays I'd have to look into that I don't have any in my in particular uh, now there was I did have the channel back in the day I mentioned that on here like a few times when back and I had satellite so things like I would love to have a collection of things like night calls and seven lives exposed and some of the early stuff like that but uh, that apparently is even hard to find online itself so I don't know if any of that even exists anymore except in the play by archives I've never bothered to look into it but uh, those are uh, ones that uh, those are ones that stand out anyway now we've got a couple more adult ones and we get back to the regular stuff so I lost a couple of viewers hopefully I didn't lose them because of the adult stuff if I did open-minded guys uh, so this one is called throat 12 years later so this was uh basically the guy that did deep throat uh one mcsequel because of some rights issues uh, he could not make a sequel to deep throat he actually couldn't do it there actually is a deep throat too but it's an r-rated film not an x-rated film just letting you know that but throat 12 years later is is kind of uh uh, and he's a good director. It's Gerard DiManio. He's, he's done a lot of stuff. Um, this is kind of a spiritual successor. 
to the film. Like basically there's a sequence in it where they sit down and they watch. Uh, I think they watch, well, I don't see if we see it, but they're actually watching uh, the film and make, making comments. Uh, good film. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I, I watched it one night. Uh, like, yeah, reflection out sequel. Exactly. They, that's because they could literally not say that this was a sequel. They, you know, they would have been sued. Uh, but great cast. I mean, uh, Michelle Marin's in this one, Sharon Kane, jo Joey Silvera, Eric Edwards, uh, Mark Stevens, Andy Sprinkle, who some of you guys are going to know. Uh, and I'm not going to admit to me, or if your girlfriend's with you and you're isolated, you're not going to tell me right on here now that you know her. But you do. I know you do. <laughs> so next up is Taboo. I will be doing a, a video on the Taboo series. The first four, those were the four that went to... Uh, to cinema so and, and those are the ones what I think are more interesting and more of a story arc this is going to take a little bit longer to do why you ask well there are four commentaries on this film <clears throat> in order for me to to review I got to go through every one of those four films I got to watch this one at least five times uh, with different commentary tracks on you know listening uh, taking notes you know getting getting at the interesting parts as well as l probably listen to a couple of reality reports. Uh, one of the things that I think most people don't don't uh, don't realize, and we'll we'll go beyond the curtain for a second, is that although my videos are live, uh, they do take preparation. Uh, it's I can't just come down and turn on a camera and start talking. I have to have at least watched the films or watched most of the films that, that, that I'm talking about so we can have discussion on them. Um, so there tends to be a lot of like uh, watching and rewatching films, especially if I'm going to be talking about a certain topic. I'm doing a director series uh, now of uh, coming up and that, that takes a lot more work. I got to watch a lot more films. I got I to gotta read books to, for stuff that I've forgotten uh, because it's weird. I think the more... I've got a weird mind for, for film. I, I know that. It's, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's weird. But uh, I feel like sometimes I cram so much in there that I'll end up forgetting something. You know, or, I'll, or I'll just something behind. And I'll forget the most simple things. So, uh, yeah, a lot of research goes in every one of these videos. <laughs> and, I, and just to let you know, not a complaint love doing the research uh, it is utterly a fantastic thing to do and uh, I, I enjoy films and I enjoy cinema so I do this for you guys but I do this for me too because it's fun and uh, evils in the night this one this one is so cool not even joking this Made by the guy that made Evil Town. If you got the VSA for Evil Town, you got to get yourself Evils in the Night, which is like Evil Town. There's a lot of similarities to Evil Town, uh, but uh, in my opinion, I know somebody here is going to disagree. Better than Evil Town. Yeah, better than Evil Town. Evils in the Night. Why you ask? Okay, you probably didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you because I like Evils in the Night. It's a cool film, and I want to sell you on it. So if you don't have this one. Who doesn't have this movie? Like, <laughs> you like the cover? Do you like the Millennium Falcon in, on there? I don't know how they got away with that, but just like take a look. The Millennium Falcon is actually on the cover of this film. Uh, no word of a lie. You 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 can tell it's Millennium Falcon. Oh, guys, this is definitely one to get. So you got Neville Brand. Yep, Neville Brand. The actor Neville Brand. He was in like, uh, uh, was in Tobe Hooper films. He did a lot of westerns. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but not only that, you get John Carradine. Uh, oh, it's a good one, Jeremiah. Um, it has Tina Louise. Yeah, the girl from Gilligan's Island. Ginger. It's got, uh, it's got her in it. Julie Newmar, who played Catwoman in the original Bat in the Batman series. It's called Evils in the, of the Night. Not really, actually. Uh, I'm guessing this is probably like a, a po an artist, a poster artist that was like, 
Is it a beach? It's definitely not a beach film. <laughs> uh, basically, what it's about is uh, there's these. Oh God, how do we put this one? Um, there's not like an adult actress in here too. Uh, she's not doing an adult role, but uh, basically, they, they wanted to put like uh, nudity in. Wanted a nudity, a nude sequence, a love sequence in the film, and the film had been shot. So the hired two adult actors to, to do like a uh, kind of a tame love scene uh, to get like to get, kind of get some extra nudity quote and put in there uh, it's a it's a cool little film I don't want to give too much away I definitely recommend checking it out this is a 2k restoration of the film there is a video interview with the director Marty Rostam who was just mentioned right there uh, on here as well uh, isolated score uh, there's uh, out 25 minutes of outtakes on here TV spots as well Work in progress theatrical trailer. trailer. Um, there is alternate artwork. It's not really artwork. It's just like, you know, there. Like a, a trailer. That's not really artwork, is it? But uh, there is kind of neat artwork on the on here. It has a lot of similarities. Hey, Batman. <laughs> to, Evil, to Evil Town. A lot. Trust me. Once you, if you've seen Evil Town, you're going to kind of get a feel of that. Except... Uh, <laughs> you're here for the fun of it uh, and, and to find films that are not Tarkovsky um, but uh, it's better acted than Evil Towns well, well we'll go with that uh, and just to find like where else like great for like trivia night too right say what movie starred you know had John Carradine Neville Brand Teen Louise and Julie Newmar in it together Yes, John Carradine and Tina Louise. So you get both of them in it. Uh, and you get Julie Newmar, Catwoman herself. Um, so you're getting like a, a kind of a, a the cool mix there, a cool mix of people. Uh, and the Millennium Falcon and Star Wars, <laughs> Star Trek, Star, 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 Star Wars on there too with the Millennium Falcon. Uh, oh God, if I get... Exactly. And you would have, but think of it this way. You, you're playing a trivia game. You bring up that question. You know, what movie with the Millennium Falcon on the poster had Tina Louise, John Carradine, Neville Brand um, in it? And they'll be like, you'll stump them. You will win that trivia game. Or at least that question. So, yeah, that's a cool cast, right? Uh, next up is the Paul Nashi one. I've been noticing on the Mon Macabre website, by the way, that the Paul Nashi stuff is what's selling out fastest. And this is Count Dracula's Great Love. It's different from a lot of the Paul Nashi stuff. It's still in kind of his like the, the whole like uh, the the gothic romantic genre that Paul Nashi does like the horror in. Um, but uh, this is one of Nashi's better. You can tell he's really that he really liked the character of Dracula. It's the only time he really gets to play the character. Uh, he's, he, Paul Nash is a shorter, stockier guy, so he's definitely not the looming Dracula. But uh, I actually really like this film. Um, Nashi was was extremely good in this. This is like his Dracula right there. Now, of course, we've all got to be in love with Paul Nashi because this is a Paul Nashi film. And this one does have, this is one of the few that has a, uh, a booklet on the inside. Now, the, it does have alternate artwork here. And I will show you the alternate artwork for current Dracula's Great Love because I'll be honest, it's, hey there, Jason. It's pretty bloody fantastic. And this is the alternate artwork for Count Dracula's Great Love. Isn't that cool? Does that not have like a hammer vibe to it? Because for me, I look at this artwork and I see, and I think like hammer. Like, uh, you didn't like it? Um, yeah. <laughs> I thought it's really cool. I thought it was really well done. Um, it got a hammer vibe to it. Maybe a bit of a Jess Franco vibe as well. Does Vinny Schindler have any musicals? There are, yeah, there are a couple, but I can't remember what they are right now. I actually don't have them. There's more than two, actually, Paul Nashies of uh, Amanda Macabre. There's, oh God, well, there's three. No, there's beasts. There's more. There's some that are to print. But uh, Inquisition uh, is there. I think that one's uh, out of stock right now. And uh, I know recently Beasts and Magic Sword and another one as well, but I don't remember. So I'll come out and reverse yet. I don't know. And and I've seen the artwork before too. I, I go back and forth, I guess. Probably because I'm re like putting things in, scanning things into my 
onto my uh, so that I know which movies I got onto an app. So eventually I'll get around to the ones like that. Now this one was out of print last summer. I I checked and I. Hopefully some of these are good ones, like that that you'll like down the road. Um, that's the thing I try to do is try to put like different things in here. Did I just show what did, what did I just show? Uh, Ken Tract is great love, and Brian that might be one that you actually like. Um, it does have a hammer style feel to it, with a little bit of Franco, not as artsy as John Roland, not as sleazy as Franco, uh, but it definitely is he's definitely inspired by uh by hammer and universal uh paul nash you can see it in his stuff of course he's there's more like breasts and um uh, blood in some of his films but trust me if hammer could have got away with that stuff in the day they would have had it there too no no my mic's not fun it's exactly where it was before oh no it's a uh, count dracula's great love it's uh by paul nash inquisition is another one that he did and uh one called uh the, the beast and the magic sword and devil incarnate yeah that's the other one too that nashu that they got by actually that's sold out now i think uh check on the mono macabre website if i got enough time if you want me to guys at the end of this video i can go grab my mono macabre i've only got about 24 of them and we can go through those as well so that'll be totally up to you guys if you want to do that because i know a lot of you guys are looking at the mono macabre uh sale um and it is probably the best of the three sales that are out there the raros is really good as well the shipping is a little too high for me to get anything from them right now unfortunately um <laughs> it's okay uh so this is whorehouse on highway five I, I like this i like richard casey stuff uh richard casey right yep yeah. <clears throat> i had to make sure but they did like they limited these to three thousand then they were gone that was it it is kind of insane kind of nuts uh it, it has like all these different like plot threads that don't look like they're going to go together but they actually do <clears throat> it starts off with uh, somebody being killed by a killer in a richard nixon mask uh there are some nazis in the film uh there is a kidnapping and uh kind of a falling in love there's the launching of a small rocket and all of this one <coughs> goes together and it does actually yeah you're right it does have a great soundtrack um it was one that was limited to three thousand. i don't like the other cover for it but i will show you anyway I think that is kind of as boring cover as you can get, but uh, it is what it is. I much prefer this more kind of like cooler, like stylized, like creepy looking cover. Now, <clears throat> they put out the two Richard Casey uh, films, a little bit too low budget. See, you can't get too low budget for me, man. Um, this one, I would, you might, you probably like better because. Uh, it was more a little bit more high budget uh than his other one and a little bit more it's a little bit more linear uh, than the uh than the first film and that is hellbent and you see i initially wasn't going to get this one because it wasn't big on the cover but the film's actually really good uh this is the second one directed by richard casey and i think it's it, he's he's learned things from his first film uh, wow i should change the artwork over it's not bad this is yeah that's santa claus this is the other artwork for hellbent which isn't too bad actually it's definitely more stylized but there's something in the santa claus on the motorbike and that is actually in the film so it's not they're not like a, it's not a misnomer where it's one of those things where oh what's this about <clears throat> next up is one that stars three of the 90s scream queens and that is Nightmare Sisters. It's a fun film. It's a funny film. Um, definitely kind of lighthearted. Uh, directed by Dave Dakota, who was a favorite director by. Uh, that was guitar because it's a, it's like kind of like a so, sell your soul for rock and roll type of film. Hellbent is. Now, really cool one. Great Blu-ray for this one here, by the way. Two uh, K scan from the original commentary with Dave Dakota. And Lenny Quigley on here. Director introduction as well. There's an alternate feature length TV version of this film on here as well. Uh, with an interview with the writer, associate producer Kenneth J. Hall, bloopers, outtakes, Rispa cover, uh, who's the star? Well, Brink Stevens, Michelle Bauer, and Lenny Quigley. Three of the great screen queens of all time 
all together in one film and it is super cool. Uh, they say there's a reversible cover art, but there's not. They just say reverse on, on this one. So don't think there's gonna be a reversible cover in this one here. We didn't get a lot of US, US uh, up all night here. I got some, like when we would have, sometimes we'd have like like, like the American stations, especially when I lived in areas like, uh, like Ontario and Alberta, especially in Alberta, right? So I got to see some US up all night at that point. But I didn't get to see it. Like, it wasn't like a, a daily like uh, thing that, or like a weekly thing like you got to see it. Hey there, hunt. See, that's that's why physical media is so good because physical media stays with you. It doesn't leave you like a Netflix one. Bad scene. I think it is one bad scene, yeah. And it has one of the great names of all time for an actor. Dookie Flyswatter. That's the actor's name in this movie. Dookie Flyswatter. So if you want to see Dookie Flyswatter in a film, well, do I have the film for you? Nightmare Sisters. Now, Vinny, Vinegar Syndrome, I've had a very good relationship with Lenny Quigley and Dave Dakota. So we've seen like a lot of their stuff come up on there. And, and I look forward to seeing hopefully more uh, come up as well. I was really excited when this double feature came out and it is a great double feature actually really fun really worth getting if you haven't got it It's Lenny Quigley's uh, Murder Weapon and Deadly Embrace uh, They are two very different films one of them is kind of a slasher murder mystery another one is a, uh, a kind of a 90s era thriller um, In much the way that at least like a night eyes or a body cam sure would have been done um, Murder Weapon is uh, is kind of a a neat little film with these two women who've been released from an asylum and they have their ex-boyfriends and stuff over one of those ex-boyfriends by the way is played uh by this by the star and i can't remember his name right now i, I do apologize of Silent night deadly night too so yes that that actor is one of the actors in murder weapon and you know what? he's actually not bad in uh in murder weapon he's not one of the he's now he's not the main lead or anything like that that's the two female actresses the Adelian Embrace has John, Jan Michael Vincent in it, and I think uh, it might actually have uh, the late, uh, what's his name, uh, Lyle Wagner as well. So very different cast in that film. And uh, Lenny Quigley's in that one. Then that one she plays the girlfriend of this guy who's uh, getting seduced uh, by this, uh, by this uh, housewife. He's working for her and her husband. Uh, interesting film like the way that was done uh, there is a commentary track for both of these films with Dave Dakota and Lenny Quigley on here uh, director introduction introduction for both the films video trailer for murder weapon outtakes for deadly embrace again 2k restoration for both of the films definitely recommend this one if you don't have this Lenny Quigley one in your set she's not the star of one of these films but she does a great job on both hey there Dave definitely right let me know what you think Ragman I really want to know because I really enjoyed this one I mentioned him yesterday. Chris has his last name. You can't remember which one? Was it, do you remember what it was about, Jason? Was there like a killer? Was there like a, a lussy housewife? If there's a lussy housewife, then it's uh, Deli Embrace. And it's got Jamma Vincent as the husband. They're both fantastic. Uh, and they're, for me, I'll be honest, they're some of his best work. Uh, Body Double is my all time. Lenny Quigley laying in the sun. Uh, uh, murder Weapon. Yeah, Murder Weapon. Then you saw Murder Weapon, Jason. That's the one. Now her, she's laying in the sun. There's another girl with her. Uh, and they're basically talking about where they just got out of the asylum and they're going to have a party. So, yeah, that's the one you saw. And that actually has the guy from, if you remember back, and a lot of people don't think to look like of Solid Night, Daily Night, too. But, yeah, he's in it. Watch Vice Kevin 1 and 2. See, they're so fun. Uh, 3 is good, too. Uh, different casting in 3, by the way. Of what we know, different casting was in 2. Like, they had to recast one of the roles in 2. But she'll be back in Part 3. Um, but, uh, the, yeah, they bring in new people for Part for part 3. Elizabeth Katain, who I really like. So, uh, interesting to see there. Their chemistry really gets good in Part 4 for the people, again, for the new people. But, unfortunately, they don't have Parts 4 to 6 out yet. But, eventually, hopefully... Fingers crossed they will. Just keep asking for them. Um, 
Next up is Hobgoblins by the the man himself, Rick Sloan. I really did not think I was going to like I thought this was just going to be like a, a Gremlins ripoff, and that's what it was going to be, and that's all it was. No, it's way more insane than that. Uh, superly way more insane than that, and 100% worth checking out. So if you've not seen Rick Sloan's Hobgoblins, yeah, uh, don't expect to be a Gremlins ripoff. It's not... It's very different. They, no, they never did make the sequel. Uh, I know they thought about it. I thought cross up and Grums and Critters. Um, maybe a bit more Ghoulies. Uh, ghoulies 2, actually. So, basically, there's this guy, and he plays like a, a night watchman. Like, he's, he's just got a job as a night watchman. And he's trying to, like, there's this girl that he's trying to impress as his girlfriend. And she's really not worth it. <laughs> she's real... She's not a nice girl, um, but uh, anyway, so these goblins get woken up and havoc ensues, but it, it's cheesy fun. It, it's hard to explain. There's just so many times that it's that you just got to look at yourself and you're like, what the hell is going on? What, what were they thinking when they wrote the script? But they were thinking goodness, cheesy goodness, all American cheese goodness right there for you guys. With Rick Sloan's Hobgoblins. Like, yeah, kind of like Trolls. I like Trolls. Trolls is kind of a good movie. Troll is kind of a good movie, right? Uh, Troll 2 is weird, but it's definitely Goblins, right? Maybe more like Troll 2, but better acting than Troll 2, but not by much. Uh, but it's still a fun film. It's Chris Sloan. Uh, Chris, it's Chris Sloan. Hey, Chris, I guess he made well, Hobgoblins. No, it's Rick Sloan who made uh, other films like uh, Blood Theater. Uh, the Visitants and uh, the Vice Academy series that you know, which uh, show used to show on TV in the U.S. all the time. Uh, next one is another in the X-rated genre of films. Have I seen Jack the Giant Slayer? You mean the new one that came out like recently, or you mean the old one back in the day? The, they did like a musical version and they did like uh, like a regular version of as well. So if you mean the new one, I did I did see it when I was on a plane once. I really. It was okay. A lot of CGI. I wasn't really into it that much. If you mean the old one, I really liked the old one uh, a lot. My better half spent more time watching the new one than I did because she really likes like the fantasy films and stuff. I was kind of eh on it. Uh, I had Nicholas Galt and in, in, in you know the guy who played the Beast in uh, in the new X Men films, and I do like that actor. To see 3D in a theater, then then I might have liked it better. So Taboo 2 and 3, uh, 2 is really good. I actually got 2 and 3 mixed up the last time I actually mentioned these films. I was like, oh, I can't, I'm going to really hate Part 2 because it's got that damn band subplot. Uh, May is the sale. May 20th to the 22nd, I think, is the date. That's not quite confirmed yet, I don't think. But if I'm going by last year, that should be around to like May weekend, May 24th weekend type thing. Uh, that's going to be around that period, that time period. So uh, I'll, I'll keep you updated on when the sale is. Don't worry. Uh, so keep watching. And uh, I'll be making videos. I'll be doing countdowns for the limited editions as well. Uh, so when I see that limited editions are, are, are going low, like I mentioned last night on here, that the Angel box set, the Angel Trilogy, if you still want to get that one, that has dipped under the $500 mark now. 500 mark now. So there's less than $500. Uh, 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 blah. I'll get it out. Eventually, there's less than 500 copies of the Angel Trilogy that are available now. Taboo 2 and 3, really good one. Taboo 2 is good. Taboo 3, uh, it's okay. Uh, it, it is okay. It brings back Kay Parker more in the third one. But uh, no, there's this band storyline that I cannot get behind at all. Now, there is some good, there are some like uh, adult films that. Uh, that have great, great storylines. Uh, but uh, the, uh, that's, and have great music too. Yeah, brown air. Yeah, K Park. Well, K Park was from England, actually. I did not know that until I, re I watched it. On, I watched her, uh, so watched. I listened to a, an interview with her on the, Revol on the Rialto Report for the upcoming f Taboo video that I'm doing and uh, she said this is Kay Parker and she's English and I'm like how did I not know that Kay Parker is English uh, she speaks in an American accent and tries to hide her English accent and sometimes I find that it comes off almost like a southern 
type of accent weird i'm not good with the ears or accent apparently uh, pre apparently i'm really not because i didn't pick up on her english accent but uh, it's uh, it's there and i now that i know i can't not hear it all right you want cheese you want fun you want like a fun action movie from vinegar syndrome uh, are you ready with a cool cover death machines I really enjoy death machines this this one this, this so rocked it the, if you look at the cover of this what does this look like does this look like a horror film a science fiction film even the trailer of this movie made it seem like it was a science fiction film it's not uh, you know what death machines are these like three assassins and uh, like there's this girl like evil like madam right madam Lou uh, yeah that's right I'm checking I'm cheating by looking down here because been a while since I've seen it so yeah there I'm not quite sure where the sci-fi part aspect of this one comes in but really it, yeah it does look like it's a Logan run type of thing but it is a it's a martial arts kind of action film and it's not bad actually I really enjoyed it another of the adult ones which you guys know I got you guys know how I got these too because I, I, I want a, a, a coupon in a vinegar syndrome sale oh can you hate Logan's run it's one of my favorites as a kid man it really is I actually used to like TV series too uh, and that is blue money this is the alternate artwork for it uh, the original artwork I didn't like and it's right it's okay sure yeah it's right here but it is one with the which actually has a, a a really good story to it uh, that's I tried to buy more of the story oriented ones because I knew I was going to be doing on my channel uh, this one's supposed to be really good it's got a second film called yeah it is actually uh, with called the affairs of Aphrodite now just to let you know there is like a nun I think adult version of this film out uh, I gotta watch this one again uh, so this is uncut now there is a cut version of this one out that is uh that does have like uh let's put it with i think by uh by maybe by vci or someone like that uh but uh that's not like that is r-rated so there's an r-rated cut out there somewhere okay i think this one's out of print now and for those if it's not get it for those that got it after my last like kind of like talking about get you got to get this film thank you for getting it and i hope you guys enjoyed it it is the Pete Walker double feature I know uh, uh, called blood mania and point of terror it, the late uh, Diane Thorne is in one of these fair Fawcett's in Logan's run but she's not in that movie right there uh, uh, she this is fun what was really fun about this one was a uh, was a limited edition one uh, how many copies 3,000 copies of this one and what was really cool about it is they had like the the TV alternate versions of both of these films uh, so it was a three disc edition so you got like the the blu-ray the DVD and the TV cuts of the films on the third disc so really well done definitely worth checking out witch trap this is the other linear quigley one that they put out this is the kevin tenney film uh i would love to see them put out the other kevin tenney film rumpelstiltskin uh which uh i'm pretty sure it's kevin. yeah i think that's kevin tenney right is it kevin tenney the all good night oh let me know what you think about it it's just a fun little film do they have original cuts of the first star I, I got i got two of them but i don't have three there's one of them that i'm missing a while back a nice while back like in Walmart they had this like uh, the remastered cut and on like a DVD they put like the original cut of the film uh, I was like a two disc set uh, so I got a couple of those I actually found them at a pawn shop of all places uh, that's now closed down it was like in a bunch of like dollar DVDs I hope they're in good condition because like when I got them they were like I had to like wash them off and everything uh, but um, but I, f I found them there witch trap uh, 
again, another fun one. Again, another 2K restoration. A group commentary, Kevin Tenney, Dan Duncan, and Tom Jewett when Hal Havens. There's a video interviews with Kevin Tenney, Linnea Quigley, Tom Jewett, Tillisa Bauer, the, who did the special effects. There's audio interviews on her as well. Uh, there's a short film with Kevin Tenney called The Book of Joe, which I haven't watched yet. Um, alternate ending for Book of Joe. Just some really, really cool stuff. So uh, definitely recommend this one. Yeah, it was, it was like, it was odd, like, finding it. The dumb makes it better. I like Witch Trap. If by a bit you mean an insane amount. Yes, Lucas did alter them a bit. Uh, okay, next up is one of my favorites from Vinegar Center. And everybody that buys this one after I tell them to buy it are surprised by how good this film is and are also surprised by the fact that the cover of the film has absolutely nothing to do really with the film itself. And that is Malibu High. So who bought this Malibu High one after I recommended it last time around? I know some people did. I just wonder if they're here now. Now, didn't you enjoy Malibu High, Dave? And wasn't it wasn't it completely the opposite of what this cover shows shows right here? This looks like it's going to be like a cheesy Revenge of the Nerds, Sixteen Candles, Porky's type of film. It's not, <laughs> not at all. Actually, it's a dark spiral of a film that ends bleakly, but it is bloody brilliant uh, with great features on it by the way aside from the 2k commentary we got a group 2k restoration we got a group commentary on here we got video interviews with producers and actresses on here there's a Q&A from a screening at the new Beverly um, on her as well struggle for Israel a short film by the director uh, grandpa and Mar Marika another short film by the directors on here as well so yeah a lot of really cool stuff uh, definitely recommend checking this out it is a great little film. Now, next up is a Roberta Finley double feature, which I did enjoy. One of them I like better than the other. I can't remember which one right now. I think the first one, but they're both cool films. I like Roberta Finley. I find that uh, I'm really discovering her more uh, later. I mean, I, I knew of Roberta Finley, but I didn't know her stuff very well. Vinegar Cinema has changed that. And they've really made me a, a really big uber fan of Roberta Finley and her work. So first up is Primeval and Lurkers. Uh, love this, the artwork and the way this is done. It does, does it is very reminiscent to a certain Full Moon film with Lance Henriksen in the artwork. You probably know uh, what one I'm talking about. Uh, yes, it's the Pit and the Pendulum. It looks like the Pit and the Pendulum. I have not seen any live action versions. I can't. Super Mario Brothers, man, I can't do that. Uh, That's the one, Ramon. I, I got like the extras on a second of this. They're, yeah, they weren't clean up at all. Uh, that's how I have them. They were just like the, you know, they're just on they're just a second disc and they just had. It, it was basically him begrudgingly putting them out there. So I'm not going to restore them or remaster them. I'm just going to give you here. Here's pretty much like a VHS, VHS print of the films. They weren't restored. I haven't seen that one yet. I do have to check that out, Jason. I got to see that. Like, I got to remember, I got so many videos that I want to share. And it's a great time now. Uh, I'm isolated, so I can't check it out. Um, any, if it's Roberta Finley, Jason, I, I'm down. I'm down with it for sure. Uh, I really like these films. Uh, Prime Evil, especially, really stood out to me. Uh, that's the one with the devil worshippers. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. The next up is my favorite, uh, Roberta Finley one as well. Were they widescreen? I got to rewind. I, like, I got them here somewhere. I'll, I'll, I'll hunt them down one of these days, and I'll, I'll show them in one of my videos. I'll see if it's the same one. I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty much certain it's probably the same 
it's probably the same ones. Uh, just you country coded, I guess. So this is a woman's torment. If you've watched my channel for any length of time at all, and you've seen any of my vinegar syndrome videos, then you know this is one that I do recommend. This is an X-rated film, though there is an R-rated cut of the film on here as well. Some people actually do prefer the R-rated cut of the film. So you don't you don't like X-rated films doesn't mean you can't you can't watch this one because you can watch the R-rated cut. It, it's a good one, Dave. I if you like Polanski's Repulsion. Is it has a similarity to that? It's definitely Roberta Finley's like take on repulsion, uh, but because it's Roberta Finley, uh, it actually uh, it's actually good. Whereas some other people may like do repulsion and not do it well, uh, her take on is good, and a lot of it is is really down to the main actress. Uh, the main actress of this film, uh, Woman's Torment, is she is insanely good. In her role uh, that being said she's kind of off kilter in, in real life she's a bit of a off kilter to the point that she got one of the people working behind the, on, on behind the set with her and said you know what we should we should leave this film now and we should just run away and they did so you're gonna see certain scenes in this film we're gonna see the girl from back on and the hair might look a little bit different. And the reason for that being uh, that Roberta Finley herself is actually in a wig and, uh, and doing those portions of the film because the actress had already left the film. She would mysteriously went away. Um, you'll hear lots of interesting stuff like that and more when you get A Woman's Torment. It is a really good one. There is a great... Uh, commentary with the director Roberta Finley on her preferred cut of the film, which is the R-rated cut. Um, she wasn't much into doing. She did like some adult films, but that wasn't her forte, or something that she was particularly interested in. Um, there's a Q&A with Roberta Finley, which is excellent with from the Quad Cinema screening, and there's a great interview with Michael Gantan here as well, who played a role in the film. So definitely check this out. A Woman's Torment, uh, definitely a high watermark. In a uh, high mark benchmark in the uh, in the Vinegar Syndrome's library of titles. This is odd. It's not what you think it is. It's so not what you think it is. It is pickup. It is part of the their sexploitation sub series that which did, which didn't last. It only lasted for four four uh, Blu-rays actually. Uh, the alternate. How odd is this film? How different is this film than what you think it is? Well, let me show you the alternate artwork with the other title of the film on here. So, Pickup, otherwise known as Pazuzu. I kind of, yeah, this is kind of like, I guess so. That'd be an interesting type of sometimes, to type of like. Whichever way Ramon makes you feel best, uh, that's the way you do it. Do it whichever way makes you feel most comfortable. Hey, Bavillian, welcome, man. Because when you're more comfortable in, in front of the camera, like on your side of the camera, the net, the net comfort is going to come across there. So um, if you want to do ones in your native language, if you want to do kind of both, uh, you want to mix it up a bit, <clears throat> trust me. From people that have watched my videos from from a long time ago, I, I was not this comfortable in front of the camera when I first started making this this stuff. Uh, not even close. I, I would not I would not have been able to do live videos uh, for sure a few years back. I've been doing this for eight years now, going on nine actually. Um, man, my channel should have picked up by now. <laughs> ah, but you know, it's um it, it is fun. Uh, Interesting little film, actually odd. I enjoyed it. Uh, great commentary on here as well. There's like a bonus feature film called Orgy at Lil's Place. Uh, not the X-rated film that you might imagine it is though. Uh, it's 2K restoration on the film here. Uh, this is the one, you know, one of the Crown International films. Yeah, it, it's sort of, I mean like, uh, you want to hear the, the plot to the film? I'll just read it out actually. Uh, Carol and Maureen have been 
picked up by, by Chuck, a young man driving a, a giant mobile home through the Florida Everglades. After catch, caught, getting caught up in a rainstorm and finding himself stranded in the wilderness, their senses of reality begins to diminish. As the trio of travelers find themselves engulfed in a dreamlike world of sensual delights with an ever increasing threat of violence. Director cinematographer Bernard Hershenson's Ode to Mysticism is a surreal erotic trip which stars Jeannie Eastwood, Jill Center, and Alan Long. Originally titled Pazuzu, Venger Center brings its unseen visual feast to Blu ray. I don't normally read the backs of Blu rays, but I thought that would be an interesting one to go with. As you can tell, I still mess up when I'm talking on camera. Thank you. I really appreciate that. That that means a lot because I uh, I definitely put my heart into it. So uh, I'm glad you have fun with these videos because I really do. I really enjoy this. This is never going to be like a money making endeavor for me. It's more of like a labor of love. If my better half looked at me one day and said, "You know, you're never going to get rich off these videos, but you really enjoy them, so keep doing them." So I'm like, "Yeah, I really do enjoy them. They're really fun to do." Ice Cream Man. I love this film. This is Clint Howard. It is such a fun film. Not just Clint Howard, though, in this one. You got Olivia Hussey from Black Christmas. You know, my favorite film of all time. She's in this. A very odd role, actually. David Naughton from American Wear from London. Jan Michael Vincent uh, from many things. Airwolf. I love this show, Airwolf. Um, but uh, yeah, Ice Cream Man. It's a really fun one. And if you're a fan of like Joe Bob Briggs, you get some Joe J Bob Briggs goodness in this one as well. Uh, so aside from having a new 2K restoration of the film, a commentary track, the director, you're going to get Ice Cream Man, uh, Monster Vision, Summer School Edition uh, with Joe Bob Briggs and Clint Howard. So that's going to be on there. Uh, we're going to get an interview with Clint Howard, interview with Norman Epstein, business cars. Yeah. Uh, interview with David no not a, not a commentary with Joe Bob but this is a Joe remember Monster Vision the show that he used to do well the Ice Cream Man edition of Monster Vision that's that's what you get on here um, which is really cool because you know you th a throwback to the old Monster Vision show you know Last Driving was which we all enjoy now I, I, I rag on Joe Bob at some of his opinions and stuff like that uh, but it, it's mostly in jest it's, it's, it's a joke I actually really do like like Joe Bob and he's a very intelligent person um, thank say of him well long before like YouTube was around he was like like extolling the virtues of these films uh, definitely really fun what the year did this one come out you asked this one came out in 94 uh, there, there had been plans many times uh, to like do like a, a, a sequel to the film and it had been talked about, but it never, never came about. I would not be surprised at, to see eventually another Ice Cream Man come out down the road. Uh, I don't think it'll really capture the feel of the first one. It's just so weird and quacky, quirky, quacky. Uh, <laughs> but there's one really neat thing about this kid, and, and he's like supposed to be like, a, like, like I guess a bigger kid. So there's stuff stuffed under his shirt. It, it's really, really unique. Well, if you like Last Drive and uh, Brian, definitely check out Monster Vision if you get a chance to ever like see. You'll see some clips on YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, if you ever go go dive in to the sale, like the Vinegar Syndrome sale, like the new one that's coming up, check out Ice Cream Man. I think you're going to have fun with it. Okay, this is one I really liked. Now, that being said, not everybody's going to like this film. Somebody was watching this one last night. They asked me, uh, you know, is this a good film? It's it's a different film. Uh, it's uh, it definitely more artistic than some of the films it has michael st gerard who i know mostly from uh the uh the young like the young elvis tv show that came on and the elvis miniseries that he acted in uh but this is star time this is the cover that actually does legitimately creep me out like just holding this up there right now i find this unsettling and unnerving uh the mask really kind of did it for me um uh, and i find it like this way more unsettling than it is when you actually see kind of the baby face mask right there. Um, very similar when you think mask wise, kind of the maybe the hills run red. Uh, but it's a different film. It's a unique film. It's not what a lot of people think it's going to be. But um, now ninety four. Yeah, I mean like. 
obviously, for those that don't know, Jan Michael Vincent was in an accident like uh, earlier on in his career, and it, it definitely changed the course of his career. Like there would be like drinking and drugs and all the stuff that would come along uh, throughout the uh, the way. And Jan Michael Vincent is is uh, definitely kind of he's walking his, his way through these films, but Jan Michael. Vincent walking his way through films are still better than some people acting in films. It is. It's actually very. It's meant to be different and unsettling, and you, uh, and I do find it unsettling. I I actually do find this pretty unsettling. I find that this ear here almost kind of looks as like a knife, like in the in the style of it, of its the way it's done. There was like a uh, a, a cover for that one. That was one. Okay, of course, one of the slips, but I didn't get it back then. I did enjoy this one though. Um, you gotta rewatch this one again actually soon. Uh, Blue Vengeance. Actually, it has some cool special features. Uh, if you like uh, like music as well, there's basically uh, this guy named Mark Track, and he's like, uh, so he's in the asylum, but he's got like a grudge against this band that used to be his favorite band, so he's out like kind of to destroy them type of thing, to kill them all. Um, really cool one, again, a 2K restoration. Uh, there's a making of documentary on here as well. There's The First Man, an unreleased surreal science fiction film done by that I haven't watched yet, done by the same director. So definitely worth checking out. The good thing about Vinegar Stream is they often put out, when they can put out like short films or even like feature length films of, other, of that same director as bonuses onto their disc, they do that. And uh, I got to say, I'm really, really into, uh, really into that type of stuff. Don't know a lot of these. Well, Jason, the, well, hopefully some of these here will be ones that'll interest you. Don, jo Don Johnson too, yeah. And there's a good, and you know, we put them in the same. When you say their names together, like, yeah, they both have the kind of cool. This is kind of like this kind of a um, quite coolness about them. The Don Johnson had, and uh, D Jan Michael Vincent had, and oh, Philip Michael Thomas also in Miami Vice. He he also had that kind of quite cool to him. April has shipped actually for me actually, Dave. Um, it, uh, well, at least they, they got the, the, the sticker, the label made. I got a, uh, a fulfilled notification uh, yesterday for my uh, April releases. So uh, it should hopefully ship on Monday. So hopefully, if you haven't got your shipping notification yet, Dave, you should have that by early next week, but at the very latest. So hopefully it ships really quickly and you get it really fast. Witch Trap's a cool one. Uh, next up is another one of the Sexportation series. Uh, again, it's another film by A.C. Stevens. Uh, I mentioned A.C. Stevens yesterday. He's a guy that was friends with, uh, with Ed Wood. Uh, he, uh, Ed Wood would, like, wrote movies and stuff for A.C. Stevens. A.C. Stevens directed them. Uh, then there's the Fugitive Girls. I actually love this cover. That's a, yeah, that's the one. Himal Bahai made in 1979. Very, very different. And I, you would like that one, Brian. Uh, very different than than what it looks like. It's not a comedy. Oh yeah, you'll definitely get shipped in the location. I say by Monday, Dave. Let me know if you do. By the way, uh, Fugitive Girls, love this one. Cheesy, like Renee Bonds is in this one here. Uh, Ed Wood plays two roles in the film. I'm not joking, he plays two roles in this film. Um, it was a commentary with this one, but it's got a really good commentary. Yeah, it would. Like, yeah, exa exactly. The, the one that John Depp was playing, it would. Uh, so, Frank Henenlotter does a commentary on this. That should be enough for you to want to watch this movie. When you hear, like, oh, Frank Henenlotter did the commentary. Yeah, uh, Frank Henenlotter is an amazing talker and a fantastic storyteller, as well as a director, doing things like Frankenhooker, Basket Case, Brain Damage. Uh, Frank Henenlotter, so Frank Henenlotter does a commentary on this one here. And where it is a sexploitation series, know that once these sell out, these probably will not be back in again. Um, limit of 2,500. Once these are gone, these are gone. That's <clears throat> Roger Corman flick. It does have Roger Corman flick to a type of feel to it. But uh, there's more, uh, a bit more violence and nudity. But yeah, it's Project Karma too, so yeah. Renee Bond, oh, then you're definitely going to like that one. Pick up Future Girls are long gone? Shoot, I didn't know that actually. Uh, 
Is that pickup oh, still there? Fugitive Girls is gone too? After this, we'll, I'm going to look into the limited edition stuff. Um, because I, I, had, I had planned to do like the uh, do an, a, a limited edition update. I know that like some have like recently sought out and there's certain ones that are, you, you'll still be able to find some, some like online or eBay and stuff like that or maybe on Amazon. So keep it, look there because um, if people don't know that they're sought out yet, you may be able to get them for a decent price. Uh, Bloodhook. This was directed by the, one of the guys behind Mystery Science Theater 3000, actually Jim Malone. Um, I love this cover, by the way. It is an utterly gorgeous cover. Uh, the slip cover, this, I wish I had slip cover because it was really good. Um, but this is a cool cover as well. This is a fun, funny, just cheesy film. I, I really, really enjoyed Bloodhook. This is the other cover, and, and it's still really nice. Look at that. Blood Hook is a ton of fun. It, this is the longest cut ever of the movie uh, Blood Hook because uh, it was a, it was put up by Tra Trauma, I think, like distributed it. They didn't make it, but they distributed it. And uh, when they did, they put it like a much kind of like a, a cut, a very cut version of the film. Uh, Hook, line, and sinker. An interview with Jim Malone. Uh, the interview Lisa Todd, the actress on here as well. The interview FX artist Jim Southers. There's an auto interview with editor Marcia Khan. Um, and when I say like it's the longest version, like originally it was like 80 or 90 minutes long. This one is 111 minutes long. So this is all the blood hook you'll ever need. Just trust me on that one. But one, it's a must if you're a Mystery Science Theater fan and you want the ones from the Mystery Science Theater guys. Jim Malone is probably best known. He did the voice of Gypsy in that. And I think him and uh, the original guy uh joel didn't get along so well which is what ended up having joel move away from mystery science theater but i have to look back because it's been a while since i've looked into my mystery science theater stuff oh you i'm a, we used to be a a big mystery science theater aficionado which makes sense for the type of movies that i like yeah trip teacher i gotta get they, that's still one that i don't have uh and that is a really good one that's the only film that that guy ever made was unfortunately triple teacher and it didn't do well at the time i don't think but uh but to consider what they made it for i think it, it did it, you know did fairly well for what they made it for uh trip the teachers are definitely a decent one yeah Patton oswald oswald was on the most recent incarnation of mystery science theater kind of being like son of tv's frank uh, i think it was one of the one of his characters names um which makes sense because frank conoff who played tv's frank uh, and Pat and Oswald, they do have a similar type of look uh, to them, and uh, they both have a very good kind of sardonic sense of humor that that fits with mystery science theater. Oh, Dungeon, have a great evening, guy. Got you, Billy Eilish update. All right. Uh, Wonder Women. Uh, again, another cool one. I gotta watch this one actually. Robert Vincent O'Neill. Haven't checked this one out yet. Uh, people keep telling me this is really, really good. Uh, so my better half will definitely watch this one. It says, actually has two cuts of the film, the 82-minute version and an extended European cut of the film on here as well. Uh, there's a QA and a on here when it was done at the New Beverly. So, you know, Quentin Tarantino's, like, cinema. And uh, commentary track for the director, 2K restorations, really cool stuff as well. I'll try to get these through these a little bit faster. I know some of you guys probably have been, like, been on here for 90 minutes. Look, it definitely has a Charlie Angels Angels type look to it. So I don't want to keep you guys too long. I don't want to bore you guys as well. <clears throat> so here, I'm not sure if... <laughs> I like Pat Oswald. Pat Oswald does, also did the, uh, the, the stand-up about, uh, about the you know, deathbed, the bed that eats people. And uh, a really good routine. If you ever get to check it out, it's on YouTube. Um, I won't like give away the punchline, but it's really, really good. Cutting class. Um, this is this is fun. I, I think what's sad about this one is I'm a really big Joe Sholin fan. I think she's really, I just think she's really hot. She's really cool. Oh, we got Joe Sholin, we got Brad Pitt, Donovan Lech, the son of Donovan, the singer Donovan, by the way. So if you're familiar with the '60s singer Donovan, who's like a kind of a heartthrob back in the day, like my dad knew who Donovan was. Uh, th this is his son. Uh, he was also in the movie The Blob, the uh, 86, I think 86, right? Or 88 version 
uh, the film, you know, The Blob. He played the uh, the guy in that as well. Yep, Brad Pitt. One of Brad Pitt's early roles. Um, Brad Pitt's character is a dick in this film, by the way. And he's supposed to be the, the kind of... The, they do it uh, in a way at the beginning where it's kind of a mystery as to who the killer is. Like, one of these two guys is a killer. You're not sure which. A slasher with Pitt, yeah. Uh, you're not sure which one at the beginning is a killer. I do think that they went in the wrong direction with who the killer was uh, at the end of this film. But if you think that's the only people in this movie, oh no. Uh, aside from having Brad Pitt, Joe Sholin, and Donovan Lech in this film, it also has Martin Mull, who I'm sure a lot of you guys are, are going to know. Uh, he was on, you know, he's on show Roseanne. He's did a lot of comedy work. Uh, and it has the great Roddy McDowell as the principal in this film. I am not, I kid you not. Roddy McDowell is the principal in this film. Keep that joke. Yeah. So, yeah. An amazing cast on Cutting Class. I will show you the alternate artwork, which is kind of meh. Heavily highlighting Brad Pitt and the other two people, right? Uh, but, uh... Definitely a fun one. The saddest thing, though, is like, Josh Sholin was really not a, a big fan of this film. Uh, but she, I guess, you know, the, the interviewed her, and she talked about it. She didn't mention, she just mentioned, oh, sometimes you make a movie, and you don't really, like, click with it, and it's not really one of your favorite films. Uh, yeah, she didn't have a lot of really great stuff to say about the film. The interview with Donovan Lech, by the way, is, uh, you got the bleacher slip, oh, nice. <clears throat> I missed that slip cover in this one, because I was going, went with Severin that, that year. And I bought the Jack the Ripper one that came out. Because I wanted to get it for my dad, too. And I couldn't afford both sales at the time. So I got this one later on. Um, Don Valencia's interview on this one is really good. There's a commentary track. The Sierra continues. That they're normally really good commentary tracks. I haven't listened to this commentary track on the Sierra from the Sierra Continues. But I will eventually get around to it. <clears throat> Hopefully I can get through these before I lose my voice. Next up is Norma J. Warren's Bloody New Year. And this, this is cool, guys. This one's a lot of fun. I mentioned The Prey last night as being Norma J. Warren's best film, and I still stick with that. But I will tell you right now, Bloody New Year is Norman J. Warren's most fun film. It is an unusual, cheesy type of film. It deals with murder, ghosts, time travel, time vortexes, uh, just a ton of... A stuff. Uh, this will be the last film that Norman J. Warren ever directed, uh, but it's really, really good. It's got a commentary track with J. with Norman J. Warren on here as well. There is a reverse blur work, and uh, it's not a slasher film. Just like a lot of people like look at this one and think that it's a slasher, it's not. I, I like to call it Norman J. Warren's version of The Shining. Uh, so that, that's what I uh, kind of take it as. But it's a really fun film. And there's some sequences in it that are kind of odd and unusual. I, I just really like this one. I don't know why, but uh, it, it's, it's a really fun film. I was never bored with The Bloody New Year. The next movie, I can 110% tell you, did not bore me at all. And it kept me watching for the entire time. And you're talking about a movie, another movie with a good cast. Well, George Kennedy, Alex Cord, and Clue Gallagher are all in the next film that I'm about to show you. And that is Graydon Clark's Uninvited. It is the kind of cat, kind of monster horror movie, which is really fun. It's set on a yacht. Uh, it doesn't start on a yacht, but it ends up being set like this, the, the majority of movies on this yacht. It's a really cool, well done. It, it is unusual and strange and weird and fun. Uh, uh, but I definitely recommend it. I, I enjoyed the hell of this film. Uh, the the monster, the creature effects are are different. There's one sequence where the creature attacks, and uh, they literally took like a mop and uh, and had the creature and had to put on a mop. Uh, but it was it was so so fun. Uh, the alternate artwork is actually pretty damn good as well. Definitely not similar to Cat's Eye. Cat's Eye is a cool anthology film. This is a fun film. This is a lot of fun. Uh, Graydon Clark is one of those guys that for some reason can get these big actors like you know, to do these movies that inexplicably that you wouldn't think that they would do, but it's, a, it's definitely a good one. But here's one. 
you like meta horror. The, you know, this one, and this this should be, if you're collecting Vinegar Syndrome, if you like meta horror, then this Rolf Kaninsky film should be, yeah, it should be in your collection. And that's, there's nothing out there. So this one is probably one of the best and most loaded things that Vinegar Syndrome's ever put out. So when I say loaded with special features, I'm not joking. This here are the, these are the special features for this film. And because it's so loaded, I will actually read you Best doll horror movies. That's a good good one, actually. Yeah, I probably will. My favorite is Dolls. I'll go with that right now, and and uh, because I love that film, I I will wait on that one a bit though, because I my kids are huge fans, and my oldest she's a huge fan of. Well, they both are, but my oldest is like probably knows more about the Puppet Master series than anybody alive. <laughs> probably huge. Probably includes Charles Band, so um, we'll, we'll definitely get into that because I love I love the doll films. I love Dolly Dearest is coming as well. Yeah, so on here there's a 2K restoration of the film from its original 35 millimeter interpositive. There is a there's a movie out there, a new interview with with writer director Rolf Kaninsky and editor Victor Kaninsky. Uh, Kanis, uh, there's also a 40 years of cutting interview with Victor Kaninsky. He's the uh, he's the father. By the way, he did a lot of stuff, and I do mean some really big stuff like Ganja and Hess, Blood Sucking Freaks, he did films like that, and some pretty popular ones out there too. There's a new interview with actor Craig Pegg. There's a, a, a brand new group audio commentary. There's an archival commentary. There's, there's a third commentary, a 20th anniversary commentary. Uh, there's a fourth commentary with, with the Hysteria Continues guys on here as well. Uh, there is archival interview with Rolf Kaninsky on here. There's a short film called Copycat. A uh, really good one, actually, you, which you really got to check out. Uh, there is a uh, an actual feature-length film on it called Murder in Winter, uh, done by uh, Rolf Kaninsky and, I, and actually starring the uh, the star of this film. Uh, there is a Just Listen, an early short film by Rolf Kaninsky, and the classic Mood Boobs. Trust me, you got to wa watch Mood Boobs. Uh, it has a part in it with, with the great Tiffany Shepes. Uh, there's behind the scenes of Mood Boobs as well, so that gets its own thing. Theatrical trailers, music videos, production stills, behind the scenes rehearsal footage, pre-production footage, and video storyboards, original cast editions, animation test footage and deleted shots, reversible cover art, and English subtitles. So there you go. I think there's quite an amount of features on this one here, so that it has to definitely be in everybody's Vinegar Syndrome collection. When that much work is put into a film, and it is a good film. How good and how weird is this film? Put you this way. And one part in this film, one of the actors is trying to get away <clears throat> from this creature. How does he get away from the creature? Well, what he does is he holds on to the boom mic and he swings across the room. So, uh, and the boom mic has in the boom mic that they're using to, to use on the film for, for miking. Not a boom mic that just happened, that's in the film for film reasons. No, it breaks the fourth wall and he, and he grabs the boom mic and swings across the film. Swings across the room. Next up is Splatter University. And I preferred this cover, although it, it has a really cool, creepy cover. This is Elizabeth Caton. She is not in the movie, actually. Uh, she's in Friday the 13th, Part 7. It does as very much as a Scream Cabin of the Woods vibe. Some people would say, and if you watch the cat, the copycat like uh, short film on there, that Scream was more than a little bit inspired by it because it's. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give one thing away. When he was shopping around the script for, there's nothing out there. One of the people that got to read that script and that he took a meeting with was none other than the son of Wes Craven. <clears throat> and this happened before Scream came out. You'll find out more, but when you get the disc, and trust me, it's worth getting the disc. A uh, Splatter University is a slasher film. Here you go. This one is an actual slasher film. Uh, it is weird. It is unique. It is odd. And I love every second of this film. Uh, is it well acted? No. Uh, but it is a good film. Uh, the Hysteria Continues commentary is actually pretty hilarious and pretty fun. It's commentary with director Richard W. Haynes on here as well. It's a still gallery theme song. 
Uh, they also did a 88 films, also put an addition of this with an extra film on it as well. I do prefer the the uh, the transfer of this one here. Probably the same transfer. I probably just, um, but uh, I did I did really enjoy this one. A lot of fun. Definitely worth checking out. <clears throat> I got to speed this up because I'm going for over 100 minutes right now. Wacko, Graydon Clark, not one of my favorite Graydon Clarks, but what a cast. And again, with one of the cast with them, he's like George Kennedy, Joe Don Baker, Andrew Dice Clay. His first film. He does a song that I'm not joking. Uh, Stella Stevens, Julia Duffy from New Heart is in this one as well. It's, it is insane. Charles Napier's in this movie. Um, just so many people. And it is a crazy film. Wacko. It's a horror comedy. Next up is a double feature, which I have not yet watched. And I'll be bluntly and honest with that one. I think I've seen one of these films long years ago, but I don't remember them right now. That is Battle for the Planets and Mutant War. Uh, they go together, actually. Uh, they are like, like kind of two films that kind of go together, but I haven't watched them yet. I do have to watch this one. But it's cheesy sci-fi, so it's going to be one that I'll watch with my better half. Next up is Dominique, or as I always thought it was called because I saw the trailer on, on VHS so many times, Dominique is dead. Or is she? A great Southern Gothic film. If you haven't checked it out, I really recommend it. Cliff Robertson and uh, Gene Simmons are, uh, are in this film, along with Jenny Agutter and Simon Ward and Judy Geese, and so a great cast. Um, I can't take my time too much because my voice is gone, <laughs> but thanks, Alan. Um, uh, again, another a great 2K scan of this film, interview with Michael Jason, and another interview with director Brian Cook as well. Uh, I really like this film. It definitely worth checking out. It's a bit of a slow burn, but it's a great little thriller, and uh, I did really, really enjoy that film. Next up is the one that a lot of people are in, interested in. Oh, and see, yeah, Dominique, it is a fantastic little film. And that one did look kind of like have a Battle Bound Star type feel to it. Is The Suckling. Now, The Suckling is probably an infamous little film. Uh, Michael Gingold from Fangoria actually played the monster in one portion of this film. Um, definitely a cool little, like, uh, little film. Not for everybody. It's a weird, uh, weird one, but I, uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy it. Another of the adult films, but one that's barely an adult film. It's an adult film in spite of itself uh, because the director definitely did not want to put adult scenes in the film. You can tell it because he just rushes the scenes along. He sticks with the story and the characters. That's what matters to him. You can really tell. That's Fleshpot on 42nd Street by Andy Milligan. Uh, very good film. Very well done. If you if you want to be a filmmaker and you, or you want to be a, a screenwriter, this is one of the films I say, watch it and like listen to the dialogue in the film uh, because he has a good ear for dialogue. And that, uh, that definitely matters. I think this is the last of the adult films I'm going to show on here, sort of anyway, is Skin Flicks. Again, another really good film uh, with a great story behind it. Uh, good cast, including Sharon Mitchell and Jamie Gillis and Herschel Savage and Joyce Silvera. So, incredible cast on that one. Satan's Slave is another film by, uh, by Norman J. Warren. Uh, I still got to rewatch this one. I started watching it one night and I didn't get into it that much. I don't know if it's just me. Oh, Skin Flakes is not a documentary, uh, though it does kind of try to give that feel to it. How come I don't have re slips on releases that, are, that are, still have slips on them? Some of these were given to me by a friend uh, of mine from that works on, uh, and he had editions of these before the, before the slips came out. So uh, so he would he sent me he sent me a few. So some of these here that still have slips, which you will get with slips, I got pre-slips because when Vinegar Syndrome sent out like some some copies to a guy that was reviewing some stuff he said hey I got some Vinegar Syndrome stuff would would you like to would you like to check it out it's more your stuff than mine I say I say yes definitely so I'll pay the postage send it to me and uh, that is the closest to ever getting a company to send me stuff that I've ever had it was a friend of mine actually that I actually did get some stuff from Vinegar Syndrome and he sent me and he said you want them I said yeah I'll pay the postage you send them out and uh, that's how I got them 
Some of them though, I wish I had the slips for. Uh, so I kind of want to go back and get them again. Close I've ever gotten to getting like free stuff. It's having a friend that got free stuff. Got to have connections. Got to see when you can't have connections, you got to have friends that have connections. Though I haven't seen, yeah, he hasn't got anything in a long time. But <laughs> but earlier on, like God, uh, in the year, I was able to get a couple of these. But when you get them, the thing is, you'll get them slips. Hopefully, I answered that well. I've seen Kamikaze Hearts. I don't know if I have, actually. I don't remember. I looked out for a while. I don't think he's had any in a long time, though. Uh, either that or he just like started really liking the Vinegar Syndrome stuff and he said, you know what, I'm not going to send these out anymore because I actually like them, which which is okay because that was really nice of him to send me out some in anyway. Uh, so that was actually kind of cool. Here's a really good movie, Grandmother's House. Uh, I actually really like this one. I, I told my friend about this one as well. He actually really enjoyed this one too. A uh, really cool little film, uh, much better than uh, than you think. Brink Stevens is in this one. And I love Brink Stevens. So if you've never checked out this, I don't want to say too much about it. I just say I really enjoyed Grandma's House. It's a fun film, and it is kind of what you think it's going to be. But it does it extremely well. We're almost done, guys. I do apologize for making this video so long for uh, some of you guys here that may be just, like, ready to turn off the video. <laughs> Next up is Mountaintop Motel Massacre, uh, which I cut the weirdest cover, not the best cover in the world. Uh, it's a fun little film. It's a cool little slasher film. Anchor Bay put it out back in the day. I definitely want to see it. A documentary on Sharon Mitchell? Hell yeah. Uh, so I'll definitely check it out. i got to see if I can find it somewhere. Mountaintop Motel Massacre. It's a fun film. Uh, I'm trying to think. It's a regional slasher. So know that, know that going in. It's a regional film. Which means it's going to be lower budgeted, but it, it's a fun little one. And you need Mountain Time Motel Massacre? It's a, it's a fun one, I like. <laughs> hey there, Scholar. Four different... Yeah, because if you've got... See, that's one that I did get from my friend. Because uh, there initially... I think there came an extra art... When you bought it, like, there was, like, a slip cover, and there was, like, extra artwork on the inside. Like, an extra cover to, that you could use. But I didn't get that. So... <laughs> uh, Next up, last up for the regular ones is Lust in the Dust with Tab Hunter and Divine. Uh, directed by Paul Bartel. And uh, I love Paul Bartel's work. If you've ever seen Eating Raoul, you, you know Paul Bartel. That's his style stuff. Uh, Tab Hunter was one of the guys that, he, luckily, he was able to get like work later on. He was one of the closet actors back in the day when, you know, didn't pay to be um, like a, a gay Hollywood actor. Um, Especially one that was known as kind of like a teen heartthrob type of thing. When did Divine? I don't know actually. I'd have to look back into that. I remember that. I remember it so clearly, but I don't remember the year. But it is a kind of an odd little like uh, kind of a parody western. But uh, definitely worth checking out. Especially if you like, it's not John Waters. Like I know everybody goes in with seeing that like Divine is in it and seeing like all John Waters. Hey there. <laughs> Welcome, but uh, it's a, it's definitely a good one. Next four here are ones that if you if you ever find any of these on the Vinegar Center website, I definitely recommend checking them out. And they are the five ye films, five years, like the anniversary limited editions that they put out there. They put out twenty five copies of each of these, and they each have five films on them. No special features, just five films on Blu-ray that were not. That were put out previously on DVD. You rematched them, put them out on Blu-ray for their for their anniversary year, for the fifth anniversary year. And this is the first one right here called Golden Age Erotic. That's Volume One. Uh, some great films. Too naughty to say no. A very good film actually. Um, oh, kind of based on the Marquis de Sade. There's a lot of like films like that based on, based on Marquis de Sade. Hot and Saucy Pizza Girls, one of my favorites, is, is on here. Um, and it's a good, actually fun, funny, actual legit funny film. Uh, Rebel, T Rebel, Tales of Can Canterbury, Prisoner of Paradise, and the excellent, excellent adult film noir, uh, Dixie Ray Hollywood Star. 
Oh, thank you, Scholar. Sleep apnea, something like that a person like me who has epilepsy has to watch out for. Next up, the five films, five years series is the horror and exploitation. So uh, it starts off with a great Sierra Santiago film called The Mothers, which is a lot of fun. Um, next up is Flesh and Bullets by Carlos Tobolina, who did like a lot of an adult stuff too, but it's kind of his version of Strangers on a Train. I do have Zora the Gay Blade. Actually, I got the Anchor Bay edition of it. I wish they'd do a new edition of it, but it's kind of, I'm not sure they do that now. I did see Quills. I actually like Quills. Uh, Hang Up with John Hayes. John Hayes, of course, uh, has done a bunch of films, including Grave of the Vampire and, uh, and you know a ton of other things. Uh, I like John Hayes' work, and I always like look out for his stuff. Same as I do with Sirius Santiago. Very different filmmakers, but I like them both. Dungeon of Harrow's on here, which is by Pat Bayette, and Murder on the Emerald Seas by Alan Ormsby. I, I don't think Alan Ormsby directed many films. This may actually be his only. Um, is it his only directorial film? I know that he was working on Popcorn, but he got fired from that one. But uh, probably not his only film, but his directorial debut anyway. The third volume is the is volume th is another in the Golden Age erotica ones. Uh, on it, you got Dracula Sucks, um, which is uh, a really kind of cool one. Jamie Gillis playing Dracula and at Havens in that one as well. Uh, corporate Assets. It, it's more of a straightforward. Like it does have a bit of a plot, but. This is going to seem, this is so sad to say. It has too much adultness in it for me. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not a bad film. I just, uh, sometimes when I'm watching some of these films, because it got like Amber Lynn in it and like Rachel Ashley and Eric Edwards, like great people in it. I'll actually, if, especially if I'm doing, if I'm going to be doing a video, um, and I would say, okay, I want to watch this movie for a video, uh, then I, I, yeah, I like popcorn a lot, actually. Uh, Joe Sholin's in that one. Uh, a lot. The guy from my uh, Ray Walston from uh, is in, I think it's Ray Walston is in Popcorn as well. Like, do I have that one right, guys? Um, but it's really interesting. And uh, Joe Sholin was the original lead actress in the film. If you get the film, there's a great documentary on that that talks about the film. And like the lead actress and the director were both fired um, when the film when the, and part of the film's in Cannes at the time. They had to get a new director and a new lead actress on the film. Really interesting to check out. And uh, Popcorn, just a fun little film. P put it by Synapse, actually. So here it is right here. And, uh, oh, the other ones on here, by the way, are Vixens of Kung Fu, which is a really fun one by Bill M Milling. Uh, Tropic of Desire, Bob Chan. Bob Chan's good. And uh, an adult film by, by John Hayes, actually. Uh, with, uh, with Sharon Thorpe and John Leslie in it. And C Candida Royale, actually, called Baby Rosemary. Really good one. An unusual film, but really good. Popcorn is definitely a good popcorn movie. I like that. Uh, and the last one is Five Films, Five Years. Uh, and this has uh, Cry Wilderness, which is the Bigfoot movie that you saw in the new Mystery Science Theater one, by the way. It is insane, and you got to watch it. Vampire Hookers is another Sierra Santiago with John Carradine and Vic Diaz. A very different role for Vic Diaz, by the way. He's not playing the sleazy bad guy for a change. Um, Evil Come, Evil Go is on here. Uh, the Cutthroats is on here as well. Another John Hayes film. I actually like that one. And Teenage Seductress, which has uh, Sandra Curry, who's the sister to Sherry Curry on here. It's directed by Chris Warfield and definitely worth checking out. So uh, there you go. Aside from that, the only other ones I have are my VSAs that are over there and my box sets. What Have you never seen Mr. Science Theater, Brian? Basically, initially... Mr. Science Theater started out on a, uh, basically on a, on a, on a college station. Uh, there was a comedian, it was a, basically it was a prop comedian actually, by the name of Joel Hodgkins, and it was his idea. Uh, the idea was to have a guy that was stuck up in outer space on a thing called the Satellite Love, um, and uh, SOL, uh, which you can also, you also know, you know what the acronym SOL can mean as well. Um, so, uh, He's on the satellite love, and uh, he there's mods, what mad scientists basically, that have decided that he's going to be a science experiment, and they're going to send him the worst movies they can find, bad movies every every week. So they send a bad movie for him that he has to watch, or else we don't know what the consequences are. We just know he has to watch the bad movie, or else. And he's made a couple robots named Crow, 
uh, Crow T. Robot and Tom Servo to watch the films with them to be his companions. Uh, and they riff the films, they make fun of the films, and they make the films, some of these films that would be painful to watch otherwise, much, much more enjoyable to watch. Uh, Mystery Science Theater is something that I recommend everybody check out. It is a ton of fun, and you'll enjoy it a lot. They more recently done the Riff Track show as well. It is a separate line. Tell you what, since I... I'm still here, and this is a mystery. Yeah, exactly, it is by the guys that did Rift Tracks. So the guys that did Rift Tracks did the second part of Mystery Science Theater. Once Joel left, Mike came on. Mike was the head writer of Mystery Science Theater. Joel wanted to leave the show because he was having like some issues with with Jim Malone, one of the guys, creative guys behind the scenes, and uh, he left the show. The, the head writer, Mike Nelson, took over, uh, and r shortly after that, two of the actors left. So they had to get another because when the actor was doing double duty by do, voicing Crow and playing a character on the show as well. Um, so uh, the new people came on um, and they did like, uh, and, and you know, they took over the show from there. Uh, Mike was a temp worker who got knocked on the head and shot up to the satellite of love. And uh, he took over from Joel who, who managed to escape and, he, and then it was his job to riff uh, with, the, uh, with the robots. Extremely good show and you just asked me about VSA so I will let you know exactly what the VSAs are and why you should pick them up. Might as well finish them off. <laughs> Vinegar Syndrome did a series called the Vinegar, called the Vinegar Syndrome Archives, uh, and what are the Vinegar Syndrome Archives? Well, they're a, un a unique, special ones that they only have the rights for for a certain amount. So once they sell out, they sell out, and they don't come back. Uh, they made it look kind of like a kind of like those VHS cases that every one of them have two covers. Like this, they are all hand numbered. Hey there, hey there, Chris, you going? Uh, I did get a couple of the slash ones in there for you. This is Savage Harbor. Now, the other neat thing about a VSA, aside from being hand numbered and ha and only coming up for a certain amount of time. <laughs> Parkour, you probably did actually, huh? Sang me that tonight with a friend of mine. It has massive, huge posters. This is poster Death Feud, and you get the Savage Harbor, Harbor poster right on the other side. Every single one of the VSAs have that protective casing and that huge poster, and they are all hand numbered as well. They are a special boutique addition to Vinegar Syndrome stuff, and uh. I actually really enjoy them. I don't have the latest Hell Raider Riders yet, which I do have to get. I'm hoping to get them during the sale. Uh, this is one of the out of print ones. It's Evil Town. Uh, this is the cover that most people know Evil Town for. This was, used to show this. Like I used to see this uh, poster in my uh, in my local video stores all the time. This is the newer art for it. And just like the other ones, I do want to show this one because I do think it's really cool. Uh, Again, you do get that a massive poster on here. I'm trying to be very careful with this. And I do intend on eventually, when I get to Morocco, which is going to be a while now because of what's going on in society, uh, I will uh, I will put these up on my wall. Now, Vice Academy one to three was the first one where they put. I don't think they're going to sell out of Hell Raiders quite yet. Because uh, this, if it was another hell horror one, yeah, I would be worried it would sell out. But uh, if, if I see it getting low, I'll, I'll, I'll beg and better have to get it for me. Uh, I thought about it because I did have like some money come back because of like, some box sets that, that didn't go through. So maybe I will have to get it. It'll, it'll depend. I'll, I'll see how it goes, how, how low it go gets. Vice Academy 1 to 3 had all three of the original Vice Academy films 
on it. Uh, it was a series by Rick Sloan. There are six of them. Uh, the uh, I love double-sided posters. Now, man, double-sided always better. Because then you got one-sided. You're stuck with certain art artwork. Double-sided, you're always you, you, at least one of those artworks going to be good. Yeah, Savage Harbor was the first one released. Uh, Evil Town was released at the same time. They're released together. Savage Harbor is number one. Evil Town is number two. Uh, Voice Academy had a two Blu-ray set for so it had like the films. I think the first films on the first one and number two, one, two are on are on, uh, on the second disc. Uh, but even though Evil Town was number two, it was the first one to sell out. Horror titles do tend to sell a little bit better. On, by Vinegar Syndrome than their, uh, than, than their other titles. Or tends to be their best selling titles. This is Vice Academy. Love the poster on that one. And the fourth one, and uh, probably a uh, really good one actually. Is a Savage Don with a uh, is a really cool one. Voice Cam is your favorite of, uh, of the five of them. I haven't seen the I don't have the fifth one yet. Uh, I think I've seen it though, but I don't remember very well. But this one here has like Lance Henriksen and Richard Lynch and William Forsythe, Karen Black, and George Kennedy. So that's a damn good cast. <clears throat> when did Angel come out? The original Angel came out in the mid '80s, actually. I'll, I'll have to check. I'll check it there in a second because I brought the box that's over. Uh, so I think it was 84 maybe. I'll, I'll, I'll check though just to be sure. There's the... <laughs> Some ways it's a slutty version of, of Police Academy, but it's way more uh, harmless and, and uh, kind of entertaining than you would imagine that film would be. It's definitely not an X-rated film or anything like that. It's, it's a fun little film. The heart's in the right place with that film. You think it would be like all oh, over the top nudity and stuff because it's got ginger in it and all that, but it's not. There's stuff like that in it, but it's like in, in a much simpler way. Now, Vinegar Syndrome also put out two box sets. The first one was the Anduville Curse Collection. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome box sets are high quality extremely well done box sets and I'm going to show you exactly how high quality it is now. So this is the Anvil Curse Collection. 84. Ah, so it was right. Hey Warlock. Uh, they did a great job with this one here. So even having like the skeleton in the box. So you take it off and it's hard. Yeah, definitely not as much TNA as you would think for something like that. And you slide them out, so you take them off, you can see it's coming almost like a Blair Witchy type thing, alright? So you just slide them out like this, they come out very easily, and they go in very easily. Uh, you get Amneville, The Evil Escapes. Oh, don't worry, I'm getting to the Amneville one. Uh, Amneville, It's About Time. Oh, sorry, I'm getting to the Angel one. Uh, Amneville, a, a New Generation, and Amneville, Dollhouse. I love all those, by the way. And all four of these films are fun. People thought that, that all four of these films were like straight to TV films. Um, they were direct to TV. No, only the first one is a direct to TV film, but it is so much fun that you wouldn't really realize it <clears throat> because it is really good. Now, next up is the Angel Collection. This is one you asked about. It's a box set, like it's not a box set. It's not part of the VSA line. The VSA is the v are like ones that are just on their own. Um, there's only four so far. No, there's five VSAs out there right now. I just don't have the fifth one right yet. Uh, this is the Angel series. Uh, as like, what like I said, 1984 was when the first one came out. The first Angel series is definitely the best of the trilogy. Uh, in my opinion, it's it goes in this order. One, then three, then two, as in like quality-wise. But everybody's different in the Angel films. A two is a very different... Uh, Oh, actually, the, the Amityville box set is still there, man. This, I don't think that one's sold out, so you can still get the, the Amityville set. Oh, yeah, there's three. So, see, this is the first film. Uh, played, Angel is played in this one by Donna Wilkes. This is the second film. 
Angels played by Betsy Russell. And on the third film, Angels played by Mitzi Kapscher. So these come out, slide out from the side like that. There's the first Angel film. Uh, there is an interview with the director Robert Vincent O'Neill, and there's an interview with Donna Wilkes on here as well. The girl in the pit, that's the same girl. That's, that is, uh, Donna, that's Donna Wilkes. She's, that's her and that's her. Because, like they say, high school honor student by day, Hollywood hooker by night. You would think this would be a much sleazier film than it is, but it's not actually. It's really not a, a sleazy film. This is a really good one with a lot of great actors in it and a very, very good, it's a very good thriller. So if you like thrillers, it's a good one. Great acting too. Donna Wilkes, Rory Calhoun, Susan Cor Tyrell, Cliff Gorman, Dick Sean. Great cast. Uh, you couldn't ask for a better cast or a, a more well done. And if you want to see like early 1984's LA, the streets of LA, you're going to see them well done in Angel. This is an amazing set and I recommend that if you do not have this in your collection, uh, keep an eye on it. It's dipped under 500 now, so it's worth getting. So Dave, I told you on that one. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, the second one is Betsy Russell. Now, they went in much the way that they did with Evil Dead or Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Seems odd, right? So Angel is a very kind of like, it's a, it's a gritty, it's a thriller. I think Dave can back me up with this one too. Uh, but Angel 2 definitely goes more the comedic route. Yeah, Avenging Angels number two. Uh, so there's Avenging Angels that's number two. And this is more comedy oriented. Uh, again, cast wise, it's good. We got like Betsy Russell, Rory Cahoon, Ozzie Davis shows up in this one. Ross Hagen, Susan Terrell is in this one as well. Yep, Susan Terrell. Uh, uh, much more comedic. Definitely much more comedic. But not a lesser film. It's a, uh, it, it's it's fun. It's different. There's a wacky like escape thing from an asylum, almost like you'd see in like uh, a team or something like that. But it, it's cool, and it gets back to its seriousness, serious roots again, with Angel Three, the final chapter, and it's still good. It's just very different. Uh, some people don't like the tonal shift. Uh, I think it, it's fun and it works for Betsy Russell. It was very early in her acting career at this point. And she did, and her chops in acting would get better, but uh, she just isn't isn't there. She, her confidence isn't, isn't totally there yet, but she does a good job in the way that she has to do the film. Angel Three I like better actually than Angel Two. Uh, Mitzi captures in this one. Uh, Ken Schreiner from General Hospital's in this as well. Um, good cast. Maude Adams actually plays the villain in this one. So if you like Maude Adams, like she's been in like a Octopussy and. Uh, you know, she was in Dallas for a season. Um, again, this one here is the only one that has a, a commentary. It doesn't have Mitzi Capture interviewed, and I said instead of that, they have David. They have a, a commentary with by the writer director Tom De Simon, De Simone, Simone, and uh, and it's uh, and moderated by Dave Dakota. I love Dave Dakota, so fantastic there. Uh, so that's all three Angel films. There's three in the set. I'm uh, Golden Gun, yeah. So so comes and it goes in. Easily in like this, and it moves, goes in nice and tight. So that's the thing. When you get a vinegar cinder box set, you're getting something that they haven't really, they haven't only just worked at making great restorations of films, having interesting special features. A lot of movies will throw a ton of special features at you, but once you get through a lot of special features. There is an Angel 4, actually. There, it's not a part of the set. Uh, now, there, Angel 4 was a, was kind of, a, I think it was a Showtime movie. It was a pilot for a potential, like, kind of more adult, Red Chew Diary style uh, TV series. Um, it's really like, it, it is kind of set up in, uh, in part three, uh, without them knowing it, really, by having her, like, doing, like, photography, like, uh, for crime scenes and stuff like that. But uh, Angel 4, it's, it's okay. It's more of, it, Angel 4 is definitely more of a body chemistry, Andrew Stevens style of a uh, film. I, I enjoyed it for what it was, and it, de it definitely is something that, uh, that I could see Vanguard Center putting it on its own if they ever got the rights to it down the road. 
but um, I. But the first three are, you know, our films that, that, you know, were considered the trilogy. Angel Four is so not considered an angel an angel film that they actually took the angel part off the film, uh, and it, and I think it was called Undercover or Undercover Angel or something like that, uh, to to distance itself from the uh, now the fourth film is meant to be a TV series. Uh, it was meant to be like a like kind of like a sexy TV series, like they were doing back back that day. They're doing like the kind of sexier TV shows. Now it's not for like regular TV, but for like a cable network. So uh, it's Angel, pretty much a name alone. Uh, I can't remember the actress that was in it right now. It, it, it's I'm sure Warlock knows, but it's uh, the the uh, the the actress' name is like it's just I think it's Athenia Massey actually. Uh, can you? Warlock was that Athenia Massey? She did like a bunch of those type of films. Those, uh, those like like not adult films, but those what would you call Skinamax style films? And it definitely falls more along along that line than the actual Angel films do. Because the Angel films look like they're going to be kind of the sleazier, lots of nudity type films, uh, but it's uh, but they're not. Angel Four really is along the lines of what you might think Angel might be if you haven't seen it or don't know anything about it, and you just said, oh, Hollywood hooker. By night, you know, like high school, but by day. Dar was it Darlene Vogel? Isn't Athenia Massey in part four? Vogel's blonde, right? Is she blonde? Or am I, am I mixing her up with someone else? She did a few of those too, Darlene Vogel. You're right, that is Darlene Vogel. Wow. So she is blonde. So she, yeah, she's a good blonde. Why did I think Athenia Massey? Roddy McDowell's in part four. Uh, IMDb. See, I should check it before I speak. <laughs> but thanks for letting me know. Uh, yeah, she was cute, man. She did a few of those type style films. But she was in. She had like a. You know, she had decent filmography anyway. Uh, oh, she was in like one of the Back to the Future films. I remember that. Um, but I think she did like stuff like Ski School, stuff like that. But Darlene Vogel, she's a blonde. I, I normally see her with like kind of shorter hair, but I'm not quite sure how like maybe she had long hair in the Angel Force here, uh, like pilot. But definitely, definitely worth checking out. So there you go, guys. We have gone through every single Vinegar Center in my collection over the last two days, so far. Uh, there's more coming up. I will be doing an unboxing hopefully very soon. Depends on how quickly it gets, it gets shipped here. I got my shipping notification on Friday for Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, I have the new Vinegar Syndrome box set coming, in, coming, the Forgotten Jelly box set. I'm very excited to see how that one's done. I have the was it pure blood something like that i think it's called and of course with wings hauser and i also have coming up the uh excellent excellent dolly dearest so we're going to check those out when i get those come tomorrow we are going to check into mana macabra and their sale <coughs> which is going on right now and i may check to the raro sale as well i am aaron so just like brian said uh this is my movie library uh, oh, definitely playing the posters on this one, man. You are the cult of cinema. Oh, yeah, there's more sales to talk about. And uh, Mondo Macabre, check it out. They got a sale on the, new, on, their, on the new website. You guys rock. And my vice, my vice is going. Have a great evening, guys. It's, uh, it's time for tea. With my unboxing saber, that is correct. Have a great night, guys.